to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing a door stand before me that is closed, and I believe that this door represents a limitation that the devil has placed over someone's life in the name of jesus the son of the living god i declare that every door that has refused to open at the instance of his word and in this atmosphere of worship a fata be opened now a fata be opened now be opened now be opened now please help them be opened now He said, I have set before you an open door, Revelation chapter 3, and no man can shut it. Whoever is standing the way of your open doors, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, we clear them out of the way right now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like us to, in a very special and a very powerful way, I'd like us to honor Minister Prosper. What an amazing time of worship. I love you. God bless you. Hallelujah. All the way from the airport straight to this place. It's been so, we've all been from the airport and can imagine all that. This is the kind of sacrifice that the kingdom demands. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. I welcome every one of you. Welcome to Koinonia. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Those following online, the Lord bless you from any and every nation. We'll have a brief session tonight. I apologize. We had to make do with the provisions that is available with the aviation industry. And so we had a lot of constraints. But thank God we're here, and thank God our lives will not be the same. In the name of Jesus. Someone will stand up by the anointing and run to the front. Just hold the person, but let me have the person here. Please bring them. We're about to go to the ministry of the word. But you see, this is a ministry of signs and wonders. It is a grace that God has given to bless and to edify the body. Taking the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace and denial. It's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything yeah. Oh man, my baby I come to pray Oh man, my baby Oh man, my baby Oh man, my baby Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
these things are not they are not a mere show or a, a demonstration of the power of a man of god god's agenda is bigger than that this is god visiting his people you cannot leave your home and come here and then go back the same it's not the god of the bible who would leave you the same i use this opportunity to prophesy upon someone in the name of jesus even as god is visiting them may a visitation come to you in your home a visitation over your family in the name of jesus listen to me let me say something and i don't mean to be arrogant every word you see that comes will not fall to the ground you see before you receive a man find out about him what you see is an election of grace god has raised us up for the body of christ one more time i declare over your life in the name of jesus for as long as you have showed up here by the spirit of grace everything that must not move everything that has refused to move and clear out of the way i clear it now hallelujah please sit down hallelujah we're going to go to the word shortly it will just be a short charge tonight I'm seeing chains. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing chains over the feet of people and the Lord is saying to release them. Please sit down. Right now, I'm seeing the number 21. Where are they? By the spirit of God, everyone who is under any kind of captivity, I bring you the word of the Lord by the rod of a higher priesthood. Right now, may the power of God locate them, whether you are inside, outside, online, every chain that will not let your destiny go i declare it broken now i declare every chain that will not let you go bring them out i command that chain broken now i command that chain broken now lift your voice and begin to pray that every chain this is mount zion and the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. He said he nailed it to his cross everything that will not let you go this is koinonia in the name of jesus the son of the living god lift up your head oh ye gates 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 oh, gate, and be ye lifted everlasting doors in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please sit down we're going to the word shortly but the lord is revealing now please don't just come out at random the lord is showing me a man of god you are in ministry but with what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit there is a limitation around your ministry you are a sincere man you love god with all your heart you are wearing white where is that gentleman don't please don't come out at random i mean you are in ministry where are you coming from? Come. Where are you coming from? Huh? Kaduna. Kaduna. Kaduna, yes, sir. Hold on. You are in, you've been in ministry. Yes, sir. Be careful. Don't match them. What's your name? My name is Oche. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I hope you do ministry with integrity. Yes, sir. Listen. We are well, very serious people. The days of doing ministry with, with gimmicks and games and unseriousness, those days are over. God is in the business of finding men who are sincere. Praise the name of the Lord. You are in ministry, sir. You are in ministry. Listen to me. Two things. Don't be embarrassed. Number one, you need to calm down. You have a lot of energy that needs to be managed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have offended so many people and you need wisdom. But the Lord will help you. Lift your hands. May grace come on you. Right now, you, this gentleman, Oche, 
take that grace now a new dimension of grace you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ sir are you in ministry come sir your own ministry where is that sir in the u.s hold on please where in the u.s sir. in the u.s yes sir. you are coming from the u.s yes, sir. you will never forget this this sacrifice look at me i want to release something on you we may not have the level of architectural prowess in the u.s we may not have the level of intellectual soundness but there is something we have a grace from heaven a grace from heaven look at me please don't don't please make sure i'm not saying if you if you want the call of god upon your life please this where place of order please if you misbehave we'll send you back are we together so please make sure that you just heed to the call but i want to pray for you where in u.s new jersey new jersey new jersey i want to pray for you there are two graces that will come on you one is the teaching grace the second is the grace for signs and wonders you believe that Amen. i stretch my hands to you right now in the name of jesus carry this grace you will go to us with it you will walk signs you will walk wonders even by the spirit of god receive that grace you will never be the same the miracle of open eyes i release upon you fire upon your hands go and rot signs wonders in the name of jesus christ the power of god will come on one of you here i'll pray for everybody but there's one of you among these gentlemen standing in the name of jesus i declare i just saw it in a vision that a strong anointing is coming on one of you and then when that happens i will pray for you in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god fresh fire upon all of you in the name of jesus grace to do ministry with integrity grace to do ministry with power grace to do ministry with signs and wonders i take up the limitation from your ministries go and excel in the name of jesus connected to the right associations connected to people of integrity teaching the word with sincerity may the lord confirm his word upon your lips with signs following in the name of jesus christ the lord bless you the lord bless you the lord bless you please go back i'm seeing a woman you have been trusting god for the fruit of the womb this is four years we're getting to the word but let me just speak over that person four years this is four years you've been trusting god for the fruit of the womb if if the woman is in the overflow we may not have the time to have her come because our time is already gone but the lord is telling me this woman is on the balcony who is that i can't see is there someone like that come your time has come there is power in the name of jesus there are miracles in the name of jesus to break every chain break every chain hallelujah listen to me i want you to believe look at me we are not herbalists we submit to the authority of jesus who is the christ of god i'm going to pray for everyone we don't call them out just to waste time listen i teach you this so that you do not think we're just playing games it's a ministry of signs and wonders and many times god would allow us to minister to people like this but we're people of order and we're people of excellence but we're also a people of compassion who will want to see jesus reach out to his people i hope you understand what we're doing my dear look at me shout jesus as loud as you can it's over forever go and carry your child in the name of jesus christ I give a for you. let me pray for you i hope you are all married Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? 
listen to me please i want you to believe in god jesus is alive he really is alive i stretch my hands upon all of you father by your mercy let the yoke of barrenness of all sorts let it answer to the name of jesus right now atmosphere according to the time of life we correct everything that needs to be corrected and we decree and declare you return with your children and every force of darkness stopping your fruitfulness we come against it in the name of Jesus we come against it in the name of Jesus let it be over once and for all in the name of Jesus the Lord bless you please return back to your seat rejoicing and for all of you who are here under the anointing I command those spirits you let them go now out of their lives never to return out of their destinies never to return in the name of Jesus I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of the Christ it goes now and forever everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall prophesy be to yourself unto me. Hey, everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen one more time. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. In the name of Jesus. Let's get to the word. Even if we have just 20, 30 minutes tonight and we wrap up. You have a court case there is a court case i'm seeing a legal a court case there's someone you have i don't know what what led to it a court case something that has to do with land who is that person just just stay where you are you don't have to land um you, you may not need to come out just stand where you are because our time is gone you believe in the power of the holy spirit the mercy of God is real and he is able to overturn, to overturn until Jesus is glorified. I decree and declare upon everyone who is trusting God for a miracle, as far as justice is concerned, it will take the hand of God moving over your life. And I declare may that mighty hand move over you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is am i wasting your time ah, i want to rebuke something i'm seeing i'm seeing obituary and the lord is asking me to roll that reproach but sit down sit down sit down sit down in the name of jesus even though the person i'm talking about is outside but i'm using it as a point of contact to pray for anyone appointed unto death in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? I rebuke and curse the spirit of death. I curse the spirit of death from your life, from your habitation. I curse the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Please be seated in the name of Jesus. John chapter 17.
we gather every time for four or five basic reasons let me just run them quickly every time we gather the convergence of the saints is for this purpose and to this end number one every time we gather before god we gather for encounters an encounter is an experience that furnishes the reality of a person a principle to your spirit encounters are important they create convictions without an encounter you cannot have conviction i know whom i believe the bible says and i am persuaded persuaded encounters number two transformation through enlightenment the second reason why we gather is to give our destinies a chance to give our minds and our spirits an opportunity for transformation through the word of god the bible says we all with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other even as by the spirit of god and the word of god is his instrument of transformation we are transformed by the power of the word it says do not be conformed to this age is the word aeon romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 it says i beseech thee brethren by the message of god that ye offer your bodies unto god it says and do not be conformed to this world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern the ideology that comes with this system it says but be ye transformed like a fly moves from egg lava pupa and adult be transformed by the renewing of your mind that your mind being renewed will grant you the grace to prove what is that good that acceptable and that perfect will of God so when we gather like this expect the exegesis of scripture discipleship or the maturity and the victory of the saints is called doctrine hallelujah I commend you to God he says and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation are we still together number three every time we gather expect a manifestation of the love and the power of jesus christ through miracles signs and wonders you must expect this that every time we gather it is to see and to experience the miracles the signs the wonders that are revelations not just of the might of the man of god alone but the love of jesus when miracles happen they are letters from jesus to his creation to his saints saying i love you and i still care and also a revelation of the might of god number four every time we gather it is an opportunity for impartation impartation is powerful impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities our the results that we command in this kingdom are predicated upon the kind the level and the dimension of grace that is at work in us the bible says and god is able to make all grace not some grace grace is in dimensions there is the grace for speed there is the grace for favor there is the grace for breakthrough are we together now just because you have a measure or a dimension of grace does not mean you have everything god is able to make all grace so there are distributions listen carefully whilst the word of god is coming it does not have to be a conscious impartation the bible says while peter yet spake these things the holy ghost fell on all not some all day that heard him provided you can hear your spirit is ignited and you carry dimensions of graces that now begin to control new possibilities in your life listen to me if your life does not capture certain dimensions of results the honest explanation is that the grace for it 
is not there it's as simple and as honest as that hallelujah and so we must open up our hearts to receive in addition to that which he has given us we open up our hearts we open up our spirits to receive these superior dimensions of graces i long to see you he said that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established are we together and then number five every time we gather like this it is an opportunity for fellowship and to experience the blessing of the lord psalm 133 says how good and pleasant it is it says when brethren dwell together in unity no matter how powerful your secret place is with god there are certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities that only happen under a corporate atmosphere hallelujah while they prayed together and fasted the holy ghost spoke to them and said separate me paul and barnabas he spoke to them not to him the bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it likens it to the oil that comes from the head of aaron the priest down to his bed down to his cat the bible says there the lord had commanded the blessing so every time you come for koinonia or any spiritual meeting for that matter let your spirit be open for these five things encounters transformation that comes through the exegesis of the word spiritual illumination number three a manifestation of the power of god to meet needs to provide supernatural solutions number four impartations because every time god grants a grace to jacob it is because he intends for it to reach israel it is not god's idea that his that his graces reside with only one person so when he calls jacob it's because he has israel in mind are we together Tonight I want to teach on knowing God. We're building, we spoke about doctrine the last time we met. And we said how that doctrines are a body of truth that are responsible for the maturing of the saints. Haven't experienced and seen signs and wonders I have told you and I will say it again that signs and wonders do not establish the saints listen to me no matter how anointed no matter how powerful no matter the charismatism around the signs and the wonders that you see and experience it does create conviction number two they are they are tokens of the father's love number three it announces what God is doing within a territory then it becomes a consolation to the Christian experience of the saints. But it was not allocated for the maturity of the saints. Only the word of God communicated, taught accurately, sustains the ability to mature the saints. Are we together? So we must submit to the teaching of the word. We must submit to doctrine. We will continue to experience miracles, signs and wonders. But our eyes must be first on Jesus and then the truth of his word. Because heaven and earth will pass away. The disciples saw miracles. But Jesus disappeared for only 72 hours and they denied him. They ran away. So miracles are not enough to establish people. They saw miracles. Remember when he wanted to wash Peter's feet? Peter said, no way. Later on, Peter said, wash my feet, bath me. You see, all those emotional vacillations were proof of immaturity. As soon as Judas came and betrayed Jesus, the disciples thought Jesus would use his invincibility to just defeat those people. When he submitted to death, they ran away. They didn't just run away, they ran disappointed. John 21, Peter said, I can't do 2-0, I go a fishing. The other disciples said, we go with you. Let's go back to what we were doing before this karma came to deceive us. They toiled all night and there was no catch. Then they saw Jesus. He needed their attention again, so he used the miracle. Little children, have you any catch? And Peter said, no. And he said, cast your net to the right side. And when he casted his net, watch this now. 
he was not able to drag the bible says for the multitude of fish are we together then the goodness of god convicted him immediately he knew he was a sinner he was naked he walked close and said depart from me i am a sinner and then he called him and when they sat down it's amazing that when peter came he met jesus already roasting fish that's what your bible said where he got it from is a mystery that he will have to tell us it's in your bible and then now that he got his attention he said sit down simon bar jonah lovest thou me more than these you came because of the manifestation of the miraculous but sit down because i'm going to give you an assignment to feed my sheep and also to feed my lamb the son of jonah do you love me more than miracles do you love me enough to be mentored enough to mentor others miracles are powerful but we cannot dwell just in the realm of the miraculous we have to trust god for the exegesis of truth and tonight i want us to discuss very briefly the subject of knowing god look at me your confidence in this kingdom is predicated not just upon the reality of god but your knowledge of the holy john 17 please we'll read from verse 1 to 3 let's go john 17 this is Jesus. This is the real Lord's prayer. Jesus is praying now. Theologically speaking, what we call the Lord's prayer, yeah, even though it's the Lord's prayer, but it was a lecture. It was a mentorship session teaching the disciples the protocol of prayer that works. Are we together? This is Jesus praying now. The Bible says, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee verse 2 it says as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him what is eternal life verse 3 please read with me ready one to read and this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent watch this that means the journey of eternal life does not stop just with a confession your act of confessing the lordship of jesus according to romans 10 from verse 8 down to 10 only initiates you into the process that administers eternal life it says eternal life is a journey it's not just a one-off experience this is eternal life jesus is teaching the rabbi he says that they may know you please give it to us verse 3 this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus whom thou has sent so if you do not know God and you do not know Jesus there is a dimension of eternal life that has not been ministered to you the Bible puts it this way John chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not that means you have no business seeing him around except for this to steal to kill and to destroy then Jesus says, but I am come that ye may have life. That's a level. But that you don't stop there. You move from the realm of life to a dimension of abundant life. You can have life, but you can have abundant life. Abundant life is based on knowledge, the knowledge of the holy. Are we together? It is important that the saints know the lord many religions now respectfully speaking in fact most religions do not have a provision where you know the deity or the personality that is the object of worship and adoration in fact intimacy and relationship is not required in many religions it's just an observance of rituals and then certain benefits that are derived from it the faith life is the only dimension of life that requires that all you receive become a derivative of a relationship when you go to a herbalist god forbid god forbid but when you go to a herbalist for instance he's not going to ask you do you know my name are you interested do you like me that, no 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 that's not why you are there you may never even know his name why are you here i'm here because i want to win some political position or an election or something for instance and he says okay this is what you will need 
bring A, B, C, and you bring it, and it says go, it's done. You may not even remember where the road to his shrine is again, because every other life outside of the faith life does not demand relationship. But God is very intentional about relationship. Is someone learning something? So the kind of Christianity that is all about receiving, just receiving breakthroughs, just receiving liftings. Now, they are powerful, but you will never be able to enjoy the fullness of the life of God until you draw nigh to Him, to a level of a deeper relationship that is more than things, more than cars, more than houses, more than miracles, more than political positions, more than business breakthroughs. I don't downplay these things, but if that is the subject and the object of your pursuit, you will eventually be frustrated in your Christian experience. When God truly wants to bless a man, he gives him himself. That is the real gift God gives those he loves. He does not give you his hand. He does not give you his power. He gives you him. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It's my prayer, Lord. Lord, give me ah. you. More than cars, more than reputation. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. If all I have is Jesus. Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. One more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen down. We live in a world where every other thing is important except God. Every other thing is important. Whether you are born again or not, once you are rich, people believe you have everything. Whether you are born again and serious with God or not, once you have a privileged political position. Whether you are born again or not, we downplay Jesus. When you meet a young man and you ask him, so what have you achieved in life? He says, well, not much. I don't have a job yet. Um, I've not been able to build my house, but one thing I have is a relationship. Society will laugh at you and say, what a fool. You are wasting your time and wasting your years. But then, if that gentleman is a disorganized person spiritually but has a house has a car they say wow you are a fine young man you are doing well it's just that you just need to be serious look at how we have downplayed spiritual things if all i have is jesus i got something more than i will tell it to myself jesus is more than God. listen to me the real proof of love is not things. The real proof of love is giving yourself. So when God gives you himself, he gave you everything. When you give him offering, you have not given him everything. When you give him tight, you have not given him everything. If you truly love him, what you give is not what you have. What you give is you. My best, Lord, is everything I am. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. Listen. Yes.
years ago, I sat down one day and I was overwhelmed at the faithfulness of God in my life. I said, look what you've done to me. Look what you've made out of my life. And so this song came. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me great. You made me special. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord. I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord. I give all I have to you. If you truly love him more than your money, more than his support for a man of God and a church, more than giving gifts, the real gift you can give the Lord in honor and in gratitude for giving himself is to give yourself this is why this ministry is called koinonia it's a platform of passionate lovers of god people who are looking for more than his hand people who are looking for more than his wisdom You know if I don't get to the word I can stay here because what I'm giving you is a piece of my secret place sincerely let me tell you when I spend time with God I hardly ask him for things and this is not because of the faithfulness of God over my life no my concern is him can you really have God and lack anything I was told of a story of a man who had very foolish sons and he was a very wealthy man he was about to die and he said now this my sons and he had a servant and he said all right you people have been foolish all through my lifetime with you i'm about to die i will give you an opportunity to pick one of my assets anyone just name one but only one and he had a lot he said whatever else is left my servant will carry it and the boys were angry he said how could daddy do this you have estates you have empires and you're giving us just one to pick one and one of the sons looked at the servant and said i choose the servant but the first time the father saw wisdom before going to his grave if i have to choose one and the rest is given to the servant let that one I choose be the servant. So when God puts a car, a political position, watch this. Lifting, anointing, emoji, anointing, revelation. I'm not being sarcastic. Fail. I know what many of us will choose. People have rejected me. I need fame. You quickly pick fame. And then he puts himself and he watches as many Christians come to pick other things. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting opportunity to choose him kick that car kick that fame kick that ministry kick that preaching kick everything and hold on to him like jacob held on to him he said i will not let you go i made a mistake in chapter 28 i was punished for more than 20 years in the house of Laban because i chose other things aside you someone this is a message for you right now to pray you are saying i'm busy that's what you are doing 
to fast i am busy to seek his face he said you know there's this new appointment i just had and i need to travel around the world um there are dignitaries coming from everywhere and he's looking at you and saying do you not know my value i'm not wasting your time believe me i'm showing you a secret of secrets more than gifts more than houses that you choose him and what men pray for become your gift they will bring it to you i made up my mind that he will become the object of my pursuit not ministry no i will give up koinonia and close down koinonia in abuja one thousand times to preserve my relationship with him i will cancel any ministration without thinking twice if it ever interrupts his presence you love me today because what of what he has made out of my life i will be foolish to leave him do you leave what works ah god is speaking to someone You need to return back. This is not what I even want to talk about. Oh. But God is speaking to someone. The reason why things have not moved in your life is because you focused on many things. You have been taught by society that Jesus Christ is a nuisance and that the secret place does not carry destiny value. So every time you stay with God, you feel cheated. While the rest go ahead of you, you feel cheated. You feel foolish for giving God your time and your attention. My life is a testament of what can happen to a man when you give God time. God is speaking to someone. I believe that this is by the Spirit. I've not even begun to talk about, if this is where we stop, that's it. God is calling on people, return to the secret place. Return to the place where I made you. I found you as nothing and I helped you. Now you are allowing distraction distraction listen to me dear people of god we live in a celebrity world where everyone wants to be a celebrity and don't get me wrong god wants to lift you you know when you watch people come in you just admire them and you hope to be like them and some of you can't wait for the service to finish so that you say give me a double portion and all these things that people do listen to me sit down and take god seriously i love i love i love your presence i love i love i love your presence I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. Yeah. I love, I love, I love your presence. A herbalist can give you fake power, but he cannot give you presence. No, you can fake power, but you cannot fake a real relationship. Listen to me. In this kingdom, our honor is derived from our relationship. Our, the power that we communicate, the influence, the grace, is predicated upon our relationship. wouldn't trade you don't sing listen to what i'm singing i wouldn't trade you for riches unto and i really mean it you are truly you are my everything 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 Lord, you are everything to me. Everything.
everything, everything, Lord, you are everything, everything to me. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Truly great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly. Some of you are crying. I wanted to talk about something else. But you see how the Holy Spirit leads us. Please just focus on what God is saying. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the When Jacob dismissed his wives, when Jacob dismissed his cattle, when he was alone, then a man came. There is something about the jealousy of God. He will not loiter around when there are many other things distracting you. So he will step back to honor your decision to ignore him until life forces you to need him. God is speaking to you. You may be a man of God. I want crowd. I want people to call my name. I want everyone to listen to my teachings. You may be sincere, but while you are doing all that drama, heaven is watching you. And God is saying, is this all that you want? Is this all that I mean to you? To be a celebrity? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. All I want is to win an election. Let me become a famous person. All I want is to join the billionaire list. There is something about a heart that pants after God. You know how you are going to do it, but I leave you with the God of your salvation. Tell him I'm here again, oh God, sincerely. Finally, finally I hear you. I hear your call, I hear your call. Yeshua Mashiach Yeshua Mashiach Yeshua Mashiach Cry unto God. Hear me, I'm not wasting your time. This is church. We're not faking it here. Sincerely from our hearts. This is why many do not see the power and the glory of God. There's such distraction. Pursuit for things. I'm not against that. But it must be everything. Talk to the Lord. You came to church. You have my 
my everything You have my everything You have my everything You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Take all of me all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Anoint my everything, use my everything, I release my everything. You have my everything, say, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything, I give my everything, you have my everything, I give my everything. Yeah, you have my everything say take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me use all of me take all of me take all of me I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, I'm yours forever. Here's a part of the song that I love. Listen, it says, Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. That's the language of the matured in the spirit. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord, I will worship you, nothing hands at me, but you. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. God, you did not prosper me, I will leave you. It's a sign that you do not know him. Lord, I've been a worker in church for a long time and you have refused to bless me, I will leave you. That is a transaction. In as much as he has covenanted to bless you, when you truly know God, it's a point of no return. It's like an initiation into something that you cannot come out of. Capacity. They shall be strong. Number two is a promise. They shall do exploits. Not talk exploits. Not wish exploits. 
that anyone who pays the price to know God, it is guaranteed that you will do exploits in ministry, in business, in life, and in destiny. I submit to you, therefore, that the reason why we have so many well-meaning believers but there are no notable dimensions of the possibilities of God captured within our territory is because very few people have paid the price to know him. It's costly to know God. The price for all of God is all of you. It's costly. The price for life is death. It's costly. You have to look away from many things. That is the price. Oh, but when you find him, then the world begins to look for you. When you find him, then what you have been looking for begins to look for you. When you find him, all men seek for you. Let me quickly share with you the platforms for knowing God. You cannot know God outside of these platforms. Now look up. Why do I have to teach you the platforms? Because I want to bring balance to something now. Look at me. There is a side effect when your hunger is not guided. Unguided hunger is what has delved people into Scientology. Delved people into witchcraft. Some sincerely. Because when you have hunger, if your hunger is not guided within the jurisdiction of truth, you are going to get into error. There are people who it was their hunger for power and for more of God that drove them to the wilderness and they met with demons and met with spirits and came back with encounters that are not of the Christ. Listen very carefully. Because if we stop at just marketing a zeal and we do not bring balance to it, then we also give Satan room to take advantage of the appetite of people. There are people who waited upon God seven days dry and what appeared to them was not God. Because their hunger was wild. They started searching the internet for everything superstitious. Then they see a name that looks like God. And they say it's an old Egyptian deity. And in their curiosity, they start studying. And before you know it, they have bought books. They have bought all kinds of things. I must guide your search. Hunger is dangerous. Hunger attracts everything. God, men, Satan. Are we together? Years ago, I finished then in Zaria, I finished a program like this and suddenly I saw a group of young guys just came and stood in front of me, you know, and one of them believed that he was an incarnate of one of the saints from the Bible and then the remaining guys were like his protégés, his disciples, with absolute boldness and confidence. He stood in front of me, he said he was sent you know because he felt he had a role to play I could see the sincerity in the hearts of these young people but I knew they were already in deception the devil capitalized on their hunger a preacher preached hunger but the hunger was not guided you don't meet God everywhere there are coordinates that guide your pursuit and if you are not exposed to it and your hunger goes on rampage the devil is ever waiting to quench that test and create one that will not be quenched Satan is an opportunist. So they tell you you are going to be a prophet and you carry that prophecy and lock yourself for days. Lord, where is the prophetic grace? And Satan begins to speak and you think you are being open to the realm of the spirit and you encounter a grace. You are convicted based on your encounter but there is no basis for you to vet that encounter. And so you can come out from that encounter and mislead yourself and mislead others did the bible not say the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons it's in your bible the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart 
they don't have to be evil they are just sincere people who are not guided there are some of you right now under the sound of my voice inside and outside following online you are probably already delving into that error I have seen people who went to lock themselves to pray because they wanted to know God and the next thing they had to take them out to the psychiatry have you seen people like that because they came up with all kinds of strange experiences and they believed that everybody had a problem except them only for them to wake up and see that they are under drips they are under medical supervisions something had happened to them there are people who had spirits appear to them and lead them to go to places and do things mimicking the christ and at the end of it listen to me just because god is mysterious does not mean his ways cannot be vetted there are indices that can tell you whether this is god or this is not so that people do not bring and you know we live in a world where the moment people create superstition around the things of god things like god said or things like this is a vision i had suddenly we become quiet no you can probe into anything using spiritual parameters i'm not teaching you to go and insult people i'm not teaching you to go and cause trouble for people but this is to supply maturity that we can know god constructively in a way and a manner that our lives would demonstrate that we have met the god of the bible paul said there is as it were many voices and that none of these voices is without effect there are people who the voice of death called them they thought it was the holy ghost they came out of their houses never to return again he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny very quickly number one the first platform, the first authorized platform for knowing God is scripture. Write it down, please. The first authorized platform, doctrinally speaking, for knowing God is scripture. Second Timothy, please, chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16. Let's hurry up. We have to pray. Second Timothy, chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16 it says and that from a child look up please thou hast known the holy scriptures it's not only god who is holy alone scriptures too are holy the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in jesus christ the bible says all scripture is in your bible is given by inspiration of god and that scripture is profitable read with me for number one doctrine number two reproof number three correction number four instruction in righteousness the effect is in the next verse it says that the man of god may be mature the word perfect there does not mean blameless it means mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works this is the assignment of scripture all scripture not the one you like all scripture now please look at me from a historic standpoint when you read this bible that was canonized by a group of people containing 66 books and sold by bookstores like zondervan and so on and so forth that is more than you will find out that there are lots of human imperfections theologically speaking the old testament was written in hebrew and the new testament was written in a combination of greek and aramaic are we together now and according to the principles of translation there are certain words that um, have multiple meanings and you will find out that they have a formula that would guide their translating the bible and so many things were translated the way they were not accurately translated there is no doubt that there are human imperfections here this is why the bible does not say you should read it alone 
you are supposed to read under the influence of the holy spirit and when he the spirit is come the bible says the spirit of truth he will guide you truth can destroy even though it is truth the devil can use truth to destroy you if it is not guided the bible scripture is the first platform for knowing god watch this that means someone can get born again under your church under your influence and you can commend him you can give him scripture and expect that as he studies the bible he can know god what about god is revealed in scripture right please number one his character the first thing that is revealed from scripture about god is his character character number two for the sake of time his methodologies every time we study the bible to know god these are the two things we are looking for number one his character number two his principles or his methodologies his modus operandi the kingdom has its way of operating so i can judge all things by the character of god that is revealed in scripture for instance i find from scripture that god is love for instance i find in scripture that god is merciful so i can judge everything the prophetic word coming to me the manifestation of a believer based on the reference of god's character everybody say character there are people all over the internet i'm not on social media but there are people all over the internet purporting to be me unfortunately and sadly and they have extracted hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions of dollars from sincere people are we together now i was shown a platform with over 43 books that were written by joshua selman i've not written one five star ratings people were rushing now listen let me tell you when you if someone calls you for instance and says i am joshua selman can you transfer one million naira for the building of an orphanage now your confusion or your deliverance will be based on your knowledge of my character are we together now number one i am so busy when i'm free i'm sleeping so the person who has that time to call you there are times that those who know me i don't even call at that time if someone calls you at that time you know that is a liar from the pit of hell there is something about god you can know and you use like a reference you can judge things and say no god does not behave like this you can have the boldness to judge prophecy you can have the boldness to vet an operation within a spiritual circle listen the character of god is not the one you know there is more than the one you know i'm not talking of a denomination's approach to god i'm talking of the knowledge of the god of the bible are we together everybody say his character so when isaiah came to hezekiah in chapter 38 of isaiah he said isaiah i heard from god hezekiah set your house in order you are not going to leave hezekiah said i respect you man of god so long and he turned to god there is something i know about god that his mercy is not his judgment i knew every morning and he said god but i can negotiate my longevity if i die who will praise you and god said ah this man got me david knew something about god every time god want to destroy him he will sing his sings as a song and dance before god and say lord are you not merciful music director sing it and god will say what do i do with this man finally he end the title a man after god's heart david There is something about God we need to know so that the devil does not steal into your passion and lie to you. When you are broke and failing and things are going bad, the devil can steal into your sincerity and make you live a mediocre and a weak life and mentor you into believing that God can allow you like that until you search scripture 
to see the character of God that he who did not spare his son he gave his son freely without thinking about it will he not much more give you all things to enjoy that if you being evil know how to give good gifts how much more will your heavenly father so immediately you know that that thing you think is God is the devil because you have judged by the character of God listen to me you know why it is important to read your Bible It's more than just easing the guilt of feeling that you are not spiritual you read the Bible so that you are exposed to God's character and then his methodologies his ways of doing things let me tell you this I don't mean to insult anyone you know I'm called to minister to the body of Christ but there are many practices that may be sincere but we need to look at them from the lens of scripture in God's economy how results are produced are as important as the results themselves do not say it doesn't matter the most important thing is let there be results no there is a predefined methodology Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 it says to stand ye in the way even that old path it says to ask ask for the old path where is the good way when you find it walk daring and it will bring you into your Sabbath hallelujah so we study scripture to know the character of God we study scripture to know the ways of God platform number two very quickly the second platform that helps us to know God in this kingdom are the names of God write it down please the names of God Exodus chapter 3 will start from verse 13 down to 15 Exodus chapter 3 this was Moses having an encounter with the God of the Bible in the burning bush until then he had not met the God of the Hebrews remember that Moses was raised an idol worshiper I hope you know look up I hope you know I hope you know that Moses in his hedonistic state wrote books Moses was a writer he wrote books that are still being used today books that teach I hope you know that Moses was being trained to be the next Pharaoh he was going to be the one to succeed Pharaoh For you to be a pharaoh in Egypt, you had to be half man and half wizard. They would teach you the art of the constellations. They would teach you how to make the stars. They would teach you to, how to align planetary bodies for your advantage. They will teach you how to manipulate the elements of nature. What do you think Janus and Jambas were there for? They were not just magicians, they were lecturers. Hallelujah. It was from that standpoint that Moses ran until he got married and was tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro and then the Bible says that he saw a bush that was burning and would not be consumed and Moses said I will turn aside and see this great sight and when the Lord saw that he had turned aside he said Moses take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground and then the encounter continued now 3 verse 15 please and Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Because you see, God preserves his dimensions in his names. Don't forget this. Every dimension of God's glory is captured and preserved in a name. Every time he revealed himself in a certain way to the nation of Israel, they captured that dimension. If they saw his supplies, they captured it in a name called Rapha and preserved it. So any day they want to see that dimension again, they will invoke Rapha. Are we together? If they saw his deliverance, they called him Sebaoth and captured that dimension and hid it. So every time they were in war, they would study the situation and study what name of God representing his dimension and they will invoke that name. So Moses is saying, when I meet these people and I say I have come as a deliverer, they will ask me, what dimension of God did you encounter? 
who sent you. And you see, Pharaoh also had names that were preserved. Egypt had thousands of gods. And all these gods had their assignment. And they respected one another. They were gods of fertility. They were gods of agriculture. They were gods of so on. Like we have in many you know, traditions around Africa. We have gods that do this. They specialize in this area, that area. Each god has his requirement to invoke that dimension in him. And God said, give it to us please verse 13. Moses, you are asking what dimension of me you want to see. I am that I am. Is a very dangerous name. That means every other name they called me was simply your for your benefit. I am so mighty, no man can fathom me. But I decided to fragment myself into dimensions so that I can give men a chance to relate with me. So Sikenu is still Jaira, is still Rafa, but he broke his dimensions so that we can know him. The same way both man and woman, I hope you know that both man and woman are dimensions of God. He separated himself, number one, for procreation, but number two, so that the clearest expression of God demonstrated on earth will be the relationship between a man and his wife. It was God's design that the first example of God children will see is not a film, it's not a pastor, it's daddy and mommy. So mommy is a dimension of God. That's the reason why her and the Holy Spirit are both called helpers. You see, it is God who is at work in us, both to will and to do. That means when God wants to bless you, the Spirit of the Lord will breathe upon you to invoke the dimension of Him that should be made manifest. All of Him cannot show up. You can't stand it. No. Even in heaven, He feels all things. Are we together? So if it is a healing service, God will move the worship ministers and they will find themselves singing songs that invoke that dimension. They, they will find out that they are, he, he answers to his name. The moment you begin to sing songs, as we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is blowing Jesus. I believe the Holy Spirit does not start prospering when you sing that kind of song no he will switch to that dimension of God that quickens and all of a sudden you find out that the dimension of God that is revealed based on what you invoked was healing when you know this it will help you to administer anointings because all of a sudden you find out that the worship leaders are singing songs that are around a pattern. They are being moved by the Holy Ghost because he wants to show up. And that's why as a worship minister you must be sensitive. Because there are times God wants to show up and he wants to use your songs to create the platform for him to come. Your spirit must be aligned enough to pick that signal. Are we together? When you watch men like Benny Hinn, when they are about to pray, they begin to sing all kinds of songs. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The atmosphere, the saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And all of a sudden you see people rising from wheelchairs because they have created a portal for Rafa to come. You know God by his names. Watch this. That means if God calls you to walk in the healing ministry, the strongest dimension of his names that you will know is Rafa. He will create that bias so that you will excel in that dimension. Are we together? Yes. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. 
Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels sound. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy. So when God wanted to reveal a dimension of his living power, his El Shaddai dimension, he came upon men like Minister Prosper and suddenly said, the name is Ekweme. So he, what is it about a song with a name? And the name began to go from nation to nation, you see. And every time you sing that song with understanding, you will answer to the name. Oh, Listen to what you are singing. You are calling names. The names of Jesus reveal dimensions of him. Next time you have a healing meeting, don't sing songs about God giving people money. You may be disappointed in that crusade because God will honor the dimension of him you are provoking. Sing songs that will cause the spirit of grace to come in the dimension you are calling. If you are broke, don't sing songs of healing for your body. No. When you are trusting God to move in many dimensions, you begin to sing songs like Waymaker. Miracle walk from this light in the darkness. That is who you are. That's all right. Our time is gone. The last for tonight, and we'll stop here. The third platform, and it truly is the greatest platform for knowing the lord knowing god is jesus himself the christ of god colossians 1 and verse 15 we have to pray colossians 1 and verse 15 the bible calls jesus the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every creature let me stop here for tonight let me explain to you what that means that jesus did not just come to save sinners alone jesus christ came first as a correction to our interpretation of who god is there are many things about god that men did not know because he operated in an invisible realm so satan and the mistake of prophets mixed together produced different kinds of views about god when jesus came he came as God in the flesh. This is what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. That God is made manifest in the flesh. Are we together? So I look at Jesus as a representation of the character of God. Everything Jesus did truly is what God does. Everything Jesus did not do, no matter who credited it to God, is what God does not do. Are we together? So when the Bible says God is love, we can verify looking at Jesus. Did Jesus demonstrate love? We see love everywhere. Based on the revelation of God through Jesus, we can agree that it is true that God is love. God is a supplier. Is that true? We verify from the life of Jesus. So when you study Jesus, Jesus becomes a theological reference for vetting anything that was credited to God, good or bad. Do not forget this. If you do not know Jesus, you will be confused about God. Because God in the Bible referred to many things. And there were times they used the word Lord, L-O-R-D. It was used for men, it was used for kings, it was used for deities, and then it was used for God, Yahweh. 
so you would need jesus to verify many things that were credited to god god had no business in it as revealed by jesus so we look at jesus and we learn god we look at jesus and jesus becomes like a lecture manual that begins to educate and edit and reorient our understanding about god no matter what which prophet said no matter what which saint of old said about god if it is not captured in jesus we have a right to vet it jesus the revelation of god are we together now yes he came as the word that became flesh the living logos of the father we'll continue next week we have to pray rise up on your feet just pray a simple prayer in one minute lord reveal yourself to me as i study scripture open me up to understand the character of god as i study scripture open me up to understand the methodologies of the kingdom and then pray reveal your names to me reveal your names that they transcend songs they transcend sermons and then jesus reveal yourself to me let me study jesus to know god let my confidence about god the integrity of his person through jesus you have a right to vet every statement that has been made about god he came as the manifestation of god he came to end the confusion and the superstition around god hallelujah praise the name of the lord watch this when jesus came he revealed the father to us the love of the father he demonstrated the love of the father through the substitutionary sacrifice that he went through he said for god so loved the world he proved it that god truly loved us by giving jesus and he says that whosoever believes in him that that person whosoever will not perish but have life everlasting it's important to subject yourself listen to me it's important to subject yourself in this season to the dealings of the spirit hallelujah for there is an operation of the spirit in the body of christ revelations 5 Listen to me, if at this point in your life you have not expressed dissatisfaction for religion and church, then there is a need to do an extra work in your life to catch up. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, the 20 and 4 elders, listen to me, that when they worshipped, they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Who was, who is, and who is to come. These are dimensions of his operations that were revealed to the people. Hallelujah. And so we see a dimension of God who was. It's not a waste. But it's to tell you that God is progressive so he will not end in the dimension who was. And then they see who is. Hallelujah. That which the spirit is doing at the moment. And then, by prophetic insight, we have a revelation of that dimension that is to come. And so it's important that as we stand and begin to relate with the things of the Spirit in this day and age, that we are able to understand the emphasis of the Spirit for every time. The Bible says for the sons of Issachar, they had a comprehension of the times. Hallelujah. And the Bible says among the organization of God's creation he made stars and part of the ministry of some of those stars is to be able to signify to the inhabitants of the earth when seasons change 
to the end that we can align with the operation of the spirit for even the past glory of god contains a measure of glory the past revelation but that it is not sufficient to take us to the next dimensions that the nations would require and so it's important and it becomes a responsibility upon us as citizens of the kingdom to walk in peace with the holy ghost so that we are able to understand his operation for it is an error to assume that god is doing the same thing at every season hallelujah in the revelation i shared with us a few weeks ago hallelujah that there was a feast and there were rulers there those who were honored jesus was in their midst but they did not recognize him the wedding in cana the first miracle of jesus a prophetic message to what the holy ghost is going to be doing and the bible says the old wine finished but the festivity was still on the rulers did not know because they had been used to deceiving the people and they had lost touch with the source of the wine are you following me now and the bible says the festivity was still on and there was a constraint happening but the people could not understand because there was no insight and the bible says only the servants followed mary the mother of jesus and they said jesus there is trouble the revelation of john which is sent to his servants oh this is the mystery that in this generation only servants will ride on horses the princes will receive an embarrassment because they will walk afoot hallelujah so the bible says the servants came to jesus they said although there are many crowds we are not confused about who holds authority and we call ourselves servants and we come and he said fill six pots and when they filled it with water hallelujah he said take it to the rulers and when he took it to the rulers they tasted when they thought the dispensation and the feast was over little did they know it was about to begin because a new kind of wine the bible says the rulers did not know where that wine came from only the servants hallelujah and so there is a transition and god is revealing things to his servants said the Lord will not do anything but he will reveal his counsel to his servants praise the Lord then it's our responsibility to begin to search and walk in peace with the spirit so that we can understand the things that the spirit is doing at every given time there are certain revelations that we understand that have been sealed the bible says in revelations 5 that there was a call in heaven and that call was that who is worthy so there are certain revelations that is not given freely it's a contention is gotten by qualification he said who is worthy to that one he will be able to open the book and unlock the scroll he said no man was worthy to open the book and the elder began to cry John why because in that revelation contains certain mysteries that should be opened up and the Bible makes us to understand that the elder the angel tapped him and said weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David is worthy to open the book hallelujah it's important to be in peace with what the Spirit of God is doing. And this is our desire in this place. The Bible says in the days of Samuel, when the word of the Lord was cast. He didn't say, man, stop going to the temple. But he said the word of God was cast. Praise the Lord. So tonight, let it be that you didn't just come to do church as usual. Let it be that you came because you understand that receiving from God will position you to understand what he's doing in the spirit. And by alignment, you become a benefactor and you become usable. It's not enough to be available. You must be usable. Hallelujah. And only the Holy Spirit is able to help us into this truth. And so, Lord, we thank you. 
because you will bless us tonight Lord do not leave us behind let us follow up in pace with the things the spirit is doing in the name of the Lord Jesus God bless you be seated good to have everyone around subjecting ourselves to the dealings of the spirit again and again every week every week week after week month after month we're subjecting ourselves as students in the school of the spirit allowing him to teach us and to bring us into comprehension of kingdom realities hallelujah because a time will come when the dividends of this sacrifice will appear unto all. And we want to position ourselves. We are not careful to admit that not everybody is open to the things of the Spirit. Especially in this day and age where there are all kinds of Christian distractions. Hallelujah. The Church of Christ has become a place where ethics of religion are taken as usual but the presence of Christ and his body ought to be a place of freshness where we can communicate to the world what the spirit of God is doing at every given time mm. hallelujah tonight I want to share something that I believe will be a great journey great blessing to our journey in the spirit how many of you were blessed last week it was a wonderful time of prayer hallelujah if the things of the spirit are still a burden to you then there is need to retreat in the presence of God hallelujah there are lots of believers who have a problem with the things of God and I hope we do not have those kinds of people here. Let me tell you something. Um, whenever you come for koinonia, make sure that you're not just coming to fulfill a ritual. Are you listening to me, please? Ensure that you're not just coming to watch other people or to see what are the other things. You must come with a predetermination. And say, Lord, what do you have for me that can help me in this journey? We are in a journey. I'm so happy every Friday when I have the opportunity to share God's word because I understand that there is at least somebody who is interested in the things of the spirit. And if God can find such a man, he can produce a wonder out of him. Praise the Lord. First Peter 2. Say after me, God is preparing an army. Say it like you believe it. God is preparing an army. Ask your neighbor, are you part of this army? Tell your neighbor, don't tell lies. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessings and honor to Jesus, the Lamb who was slain, glory and power. Forever and ever and ever you reign. Forever and ever you reign. Forever and ever and ever you reign. 
Hallelujah. First Peter two, verse nine. First Peter two, verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. He never said you are members of living faith, or Christ's embassy, or deeper life, or redeemed. Those are structures. You get my point? What I'm saying beyond the structures, you must look. He says, are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a people of his own that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so the bible tells us clearly here that we have been called out of darkness and given an assignment hallelujah and that assignment is to show forth the praises of him that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. And tonight we are going to be examining how far we have gone in this journey. And obtain grace to press ahead. Hallelujah. The children of Issachar, the Bible says, had an understanding of the times. And as a result, they knew what to do. They knew how to align themselves with the things that the Spirit was attempting to bring. And not everyone is able to align himself to the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. You know why? Because alignment means that you have to die to yourself. Hallelujah. Alignment means that you are bending to assume a posture that may not be convenient. And so it takes a revelation bigger than yourself and your personal comforts to say, Lord, regardless of how this will affect me, I am prepared to come into alignment with your divine will to the end that your plans and purposes be achieved at every given time. That as you search for men and women that you will use to do exploits, that you can find a vessel in me. Bible says but in a great house there are not only vessels of wood or gold and silver but of wood and of clay he says some are unto dishonor and some are unto honor he says if a man will purge himself that man will become a vessel unto honor fit for the master's use say after me once again God is raising an army and say I am part of that army I am part of that army led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. We'll just establish a few things and then we'll pray. verse 1 blow the trumpet in Zion sound the alarm on my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is near at hand a day of darkness and of gloominess a day of clouds and of thick darkness like the morning spread upon the mountains a great people this is the description of God's army please listen a great people and strong there has not ever been like them before you cannot trace them to any history neither shall any more be after it even to the years of many generations they are characterized by a fire that devoureth before them they are men of fire confirming that which the bible says he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flame and behind them a flame burneth, and the land is like the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. They are thorough people. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses, and like the horsemen, so shall they run. 
Like the noise of chariots on the mountain tops, they shall leap. Like the noise of the flame of fire that devoured the stubble. Like a, like a strong people set in a battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. The Bible says they shall run like mighty men. Look at this description. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. No competition. No dabbling into unnecessary things. Everyone maintaining focus. That's what Watchmanee calls the limitation of the body. The capacity to allow every member to function within the jurisdiction of their grace. The Bible says they will not break ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, can you imagine? They shall not be wounded. What an army. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall and they shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the star shall withdraw her shining. The Bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you light by moon. It says Jehovah, the Christ himself, he will be your everlasting light. That means they will function from a different source of illumination. Not that which has been known. Are you listening to me? Because he made many lights. But at the emergence of the two great lights, there was no longer those kinds of lights. It's not like they were not truth. But they were no longer needed in light of the higher lights. Let's finish up. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. That means the Lord himself is the commander. For his camp is very great. For he is strong who executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide? Look up please. There is, there is a campaign of the spirit. The Holy Ghost is running to and fro across the length and breadth of this nation, the nation of Africa and across the world, searching for men and women who will avail themselves to be used. Hallelujah. Every time before a Kairos moment in the earth, God begins to prepare a people. And the first thing he does is to begin to beckon on them. So that they willingly offer themselves and say we are available. Are you listening to me? We are available. And then he separates those people. And begins to subject them to the trainings that will equip them for his agenda. Now the very difficult thing is this. Separation is a very difficult thing because it entails you breaking away from status quo breaking away from what has been received as the norm and so your mind will fight it everything around you will fight it and the pressure that standing alone will bring to you will ask you whether it is worth it to stand that's why the bible says haven't done all to stand stand hallelujah and all over the body of Christ, there has been a sudden awakening. Pastors, apostles, preachers, evangelists, as many who are careful enough to listen to the promptings and the dealings of the Spirit. They are beginning to blow this alarm in Zion and to sound it upon his holy mountain. That there are a people that God is preparing, is raising, is training, is building. And that the fashion of this training is not one that will be traced to the dealings of God in the past. Here and there we could take extracts from the dealings of God with Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. But that there is a unique operation of the spirit that is bringing on this caliber of people. That will necessitate staying with the Holy Ghost part time. You will not miss the Holy Ghost and go back to history and expect to catch up. Because the dealings are foreign to the things that he has done before. 
And so God will entail that these people will subject themselves to the total leadership of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is why coming under the Lordship of the Spirit is only the beginning of the journey, not the end. Coming under the Lordship means that you are bringing yourself under subjection to say, Lord, you are looking for an army and you are training and preparing men and I may not have all that it takes right now, but I have a willing heart. I watched Catherine Kuhlman yesterday and I cried. I wept like a baby when I watched this dear woman of God standing in power, an epitome of yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And while she stood on the stage ministering the word of God, you could see the oneness, the similitude. You could see how, how intertwined, how mingled this woman had been with the Holy Ghost. That her utterances were so piercing, not because of the volume of her voice, but the depth and the realm from which she was fetching these things from. A woman and she made an interesting statement. She said, Catherine Kuman died a long time ago. She said, I remember the date and the time I died. She entered a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He has now become my new life. And my movement is according to the impulse of the spirit. And that is going to be the characteristic of the spiritual man. Speaking to Nicodemus, Jesus said, The wind bloweth where it listeth. You will not be able to predict this generation of people. Because they have subjected themselves under the total influence of the spirit. That's where we get the word baptism. It's from the Greek word baptizo. It means to be totally immersed in a flood such that you do not see the person again. You only see the object that immersed him. And so we come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now a lot of believers have trivialized the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But without the Holy Spirit, there is no hope. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. Listen to me. He is the guarantee that we can become that army to the expectation of God. Because he's the one who guides us and builds us. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This has been our journey all through Koinonia. It is not a move to make a name. It's an attempt to cooperate with the Spirit. And partner with him. In bringing a convergence of as many who are interested in becoming part of this move of God. Who will indicate willingness to subject themselves to the dealings of the spirit over time. We don't tell you lies here. We don't hype you with, with all kinds of nonsense. The word of God comes in truth and power. And I've said it again, it will cost you to align with the spirit. The Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with the activities of civilians. And so when you come, there will be a demand upon you to lay aside your ambition and pick up that of the king. But then as surely as the Lord lives, there will be a reward for that sacrifice. He said meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. So I'm aware that there are different kinds of people and different kinds of soils. And so I want us to start tonight by reminding ourselves that every time we appear before God in Zion, we came for business. Hallelujah. We didn't just come to um, enjoy the atmosphere or to while away two or three hours. No. We came based on the revelation. Listen, I must get you to understand this. If you do not, you will not be able to benefit maximally. Are you following me now? You must come with a predetermination that I am coming to continue the training. It is not an endless training. There is a day the sound of the trumpet will blow. 
and at such times you will appreciate the meticulous dealings of the spirit touching issues after issues aspects after aspects flogging out a lot of things pruning different things the bible says narrow is the path that leads to life why because when you are entering that path jesus gave us a similitude of that revelation using the eye of the needle it will it will entail you divorcing yourself with a lot of things and going alone so the path is narrow in other words the things that can pass have been predetermined you will not come with excess luggages and mindsets but wide is the way that leads to destruction. And Jesus said, because the rich people have a lot of things, he said they may not be able to pass. Are you following me? And so you come with your ambitions and different things. And then some of us may come just to use Jesus Christ as an errand boy as usual. Because that's the move that has been taught in the body of Christ. And so we have a need-driven congregation who only come to God as a means to an end. And that end is to satisfy their belly and to bring themselves in a position where they are comforted. Rulers in the feast while the Lord of the harvest is in the congregation. He's not honored and he's not esteemed. But the Bible tells us in heaven that there will be a supper. And in that supper, the one who should be the head will actually be the head are you following me tonight and so the first challenge that the Holy Ghost places before us tonight is to ask you how serious are you how much are you convicted what is your passion about the things of God and about this army that God is mobilizing what is your concept of Christianity and church and religion why do you pursue God he said, why do you call me Lord? And then I notice that there is only a receiving from you. There is no doing. You call me Lord because you came and understood by knowledge that there is a dimension of me that is able to supply your needs. You call me Lord because you understand that there is a dimension that is able to protect you and give you a wife and give you a husband. But this kind of army are not the ones who are going to tie God to a covenant. They are going to say, Lord, blessing or no blessing. They are the type who were sent to the vineyard without negotiation. They did not negotiate. When he called the people in the morning, they said, we will only work if you will pay us a denary. He said, you mean... If I don't pay you, you won't work. He said, no pay, no work. And he said, all right. You have tied a covenant with me, go. Later, he found some people sitting. And he said, do you love me enough to walk in my vineyard? They said, yes. No arrangement. And they entered the vineyard. At the end of the day, even those who came willingly, but at the 11th hour, got the same reward with those who gave God conditions. And they were angry. And he said, am I not the Lord of the harvest? What did I do that was wrong? That Christianity that gives God conditions before your allegiance must be destroyed is witchcraft coming from the pit of hell. Are you listening to me? Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Men and women who love God with their life, with their soul, with their all. Your passion is not motivated by any loss that you have hidden. Waiting to be manifested. And you say, Lord, I love you and I believe your word. But I am more passionate than any other thing. I'm not just pursuing you. Listen. It's time the church body begins to define what is motivating their pursuit to God. Are you listening to me? Because that is what will determine how far we will continue in this journey. If you are pursuing God for money or fame or husband or wife, that means the day you get married, you have no need to pursue again. Are you listening to me? And so our desire for, for God must come from an eternal plane that nothing in time will be able to quench that hunger. This becomes the platform on which authentic Christianity will spring from. To say, Lord, I love you and I'm committed. Whatever your agenda is, I am interested. I get troubled in my spirit seeing how many believers openly do not care about the agenda of God. 
the average church in Nigeria is only interested in fulfilling programs and holding conferences and conventions and we name all kinds of things and we are happy we are meticulous in planning the ego of the, the man of God or the organizer is at stake and every kind of artistry and accuracy comes into it but the one whose agenda we should pursue is left and the rulers are contending to be lords in the feast are you listening to me and so spiritual growth is not just an act of knowing scripture it's first coming to a point where you realize that you have no life of your own listen to me that's not the end that's the beginning this is the reason why a spiritual man is he watched so much in the presence of God because of all of these sacrifices that you have to subject yourself to. Thank you, Jesus. And tonight, what is your motivation? Why are you pursuing God? Why are you running after the things of God? Is it with a passion that will expire when certain things come into your life? Or is a genuine passion. You say, Lord, I thank you because you will give me a wife and a husband and a car and all of this. But I need you to know that I mean business with you. Are you just pursuing God because you are a student? And then you need him so that you can use him as a ladder towards academic success. And the day you cry and you graduate, you just wave him and say, Lord, there are many others who didn't backslide like me. So you can concentrate on them. lovest thou me more than this this was a question that he asked peter because you know listen let me tell you something peter is, a, is an interesting figure when jesus was going to clean the feet of the disciples peter said ah i respect you so much i mean come on how can you clean my feet jesus said you do not even know what i'm doing and peter said now just bath me now i understand and he was the one who ran away and betrayed jesus to the point that he called a little girl woman because he was trying to defend himself. Hallelujah. And when the hidden agenda that was in their heart, see, eventually, over time, the agenda in their heart for pursuing Jesus began to unravel. When the mother of James and John came to meet Jesus on behalf of her two sons, meaning they were already nursing it, that Jesus will conquer Caesar and now become the king of the roman empire and then at that point the disciples will become members of the cabinet so while they were pursuing him they were already setting their campaign strategies on ground and they used their mother and the mother will say you know i'm a woman what will you do to my children because i got disturbed at the speed with which they left fishing and started following jesus they didn't think about it jesus was a celebrity come and they say of course i've always wanted and then later on when they found out that this journey was getting too long they started asking questions first among themselves this is why you see a preacher 10 years diligence in, in god and then after a while he just says lord at least heaven knows i've tried because the motif that was behind the establishment of that ministry is beginning to be revealed hallelujah are you following me tonight the light of god is searching our hearts to help us this is how we grow in the spirit and then at a particular time they wanted to motivate themselves in the absence of jesus because they did not understand what governmental authority is they did not understand that you only receive results where you are sent Jesus went with Peter, James, and John and the remaining disciples gathered themselves around and they could not stand the ego and the embarrassment that the crowd around them, they said, look, why wait for Jesus? Can't we take initiatives on our own? And they brought somebody who was epileptic and they did not understand the order and the trainings in the spirit and how things are done. They began to assume the position so that in the absence of Jesus, they might receive a temporary glory and console their loss before his arrival and they were disappointed because they saw jesus do it with ease and they thought it would happen that same way 
here and there in the Bible, you will see men who pursue Jesus Christ for different reasons. People who wanted to buy anointing. So the, 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 the issue of buying anointing did not start from our generation. When they saw that by the laying on of hands, men were receiving the Holy Ghost, how much? Let me give you. And the church of Christ has turned into a place of gullible men and women of God. Selling what they perceive to be the anointing. And we have a church that will not grow because the price for growth is unbearable. And so we rather prefer to, in, to, to mediate and use the prophetic and the apostolic and whatever can stand to give us a momentary succor. So if I need to find out whether it's the will of God for the job or not, I know that if I'm to follow the regular part of the spirit, I may need to wait upon the Lord in praying and fasting for three days and I say, why waste my time? When there is a donkey called a prophet and an apostle that we can ride gloriously on. And so we have a result-oriented church. Man of God, tell me what will become of my life. And we do not know him. And we are not even interested in the agenda of God. And let me tell you, friends, if God does not raise carpenters to judge the manifestation of these horns that rise up against Judah, I tell you, there will be casualty in our generation. A time will come when the new age will wipe Christianity if we do not stand. And this is why God is creating platforms like this across the nations, the remnant, who will stand and say, no, this is not the pattern of the spirit. Are you listening to me? It cannot be church as usual. The average Christian is taught know nothing about Jesus. Do you know, I asked somebody one day, I said, who is Jesus? Born again, spirit filled. I said, who is Jesus? And he was shocked to find out that he did not even know what to tell me about Jesus. He just said, he's the savior of the world. Let me ask you, who is Jesus? No, no, no. Don't give me a, a guesswork or what you got from your Bible. Who is Jesus? Do you know him? If you don't stop telling lies on stage that he's your friend. Because the way we talk about him is as though we drank tea with him. But then you ask him, who is Jesus? Who is the Holy Ghost? Amazing that the church does not even know the Holy Ghost. Scholars know more about the Holy Ghost than the church. They have researched as critics and come up with facts that the church is not even aware. We are not interested. The message about Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the kingdom and the life of God, the priority and the agenda of the Father that should be the pivot of the operation of every church is absent. And we have replaced it with all kinds of activities. Making money, promoting people. And you see people trying to be zealous in church and all they are looking for is the name deacon or pastor. And that becomes our ultimate satisfaction. There needs to be a redefinition of what has been motivating us in our pursuit for God. No wonder at every challenge many believers stand and give up. But the Bible says if your strength fails you in the day of battle, that means you did not gather strength. Hallelujah. If I were the pastor of many churches, after this service, they will, they will have a board meeting about me. I say, we don't like this kind of thing. You don't come and spoil our minds. Read about Jesus Christ. Elijah was called the troublemaker in Israel. And right now you have believers who come into a building. and say, why didn't they put AC? I'm sweating and I'm getting inconvenienced. But students can stand to collect scholarship. In front of guidance and counseling. In the hot sun. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. You are determined to get it. No matter what happens. You stand on that line. You maintain your position. They want to push you. You say, I'm not going anywhere. They say, you are a lady. You say, I know. I will show you I'm a lady of Jesus. We, we, we. So we have that spirit of determination. 
But when it comes to the things of the spirit, you hold a service after one hour, 30 minutes, everybody's looking at their watch. And it's not like they have what, something to do afterwards. Because immediately after the meeting, you see them greeting one another for hours. So why the hurry? What is motivating us? What drives our pursuit for God? Are we passionate? When Jesus came, he said, listen, this is my meat. In other words, I derive satisfaction in this. To do the will of the Father. He said, I must walk the, him, the works of him that sent me while it is day. He placed urgency on his assignment for the night coming. When no man can walk again. Is there an urgency in your spirit to pursue God? Hallelujah. And then the second group of people in church that we have are those who have pressed onto God to a measure and then got to that measure and based on what we want to call movements, holiness movement, word of faith movement, charismatic movement, the moment you contend to the point that you enter the, the revelations of a movement, you are satisfied. And there is no pressure upon our spirits to contend for greater height. Not realizing that there are certain scrolls that have been closed. That if we will contend, it will be open unto us. And we will open up new revelations about God. And be a blessing to the body. And so I ask you a question tonight under God. Are you really interested in the agenda of the Father? What are you really? Define what motivates you. Heaven wife money cgpa a job at what point will you rest and say kai i've tried in this christian journey you must define it right now i will go i will go wherever you lead me yeah. I will go I will go I will go wherever you lead me I will go can that be the anthem of your life that when people ask you and say what is your plan and goal in life? You will first tell them that all that I'm about to tell you is a derivative of what God has committed unto me. I did not cook, sit down and cook up any ambition for myself. Because I am bound by an oath to my Savior that I will stand and live for him. I have brought myself willingly under the government and the sovereign rule of the king. And I will not compromise. Before I continue, we're going to pray for five minutes. And that prayer, listen to me, please. Don't bow your head. We're not bowing heads here. We're going to pray audibly. Hallelujah. And the prayer is going to say, Lord, I lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. You will hear us preach this again and again. Lord, I will bow to you, to no other. We are going to repent before we continue in this service. The first repentance is to say, Lord, I'm ashamed to find out. That there has been a hidden loss that has been motivating my pursuit for you. But tonight I repent. Are you listening to me? You are going to pray. Because you know I am not lying. I pray this to God every time. I say Lord if there is any other reason aside from my love for you. Why I pursue you. Judge it, prune it and bring me to a point. Where I become a dead man without you. Is that your prayer? We are going to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I lay down idols. 
I cannot deny that I have needs. But Lord, I have led these needs to motivate my love for you. Come on, pray. Lord, hidden in me is the ability to want fame. I cannot deny it. And while it is not bad, I have allowed it to motivate my pursuit. Lord, I've been crying for spiritual gifts because I don't want to have suffered inferiority complex. And so I'm looking for what will ease it away. And unfortunately, I allowed it to slip and become my motivation for you. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Say, Lord, I came here with a need. But Lord, in the light of your word, if I will be honest with myself, I'm just pursuing you. The hunger increased simply because I needed a solution. Not because I loved you. Not because I was passionate about your agenda. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. I have made you too small in my eyes. We are still praying. Oh Lord. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me. But tonight in Koinonia, but now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. heart and with my soul oh lord be mad come on magnify him above your knees oh lord be mad be magnified be magnified oh lord for God will tell in your desire for evangelism 
your passion for God will tell in how much you give to the house of God your desire will tell how much you pray for the house of God your desire will tell and how much you love the word of God how much you love his spirit we are still praying five minutes say Lord search my heart I'm not pretending tonight I cannot lie there are idols in my heart I'm a Christian I'm born again I'm filled with the Holy Ghost but Lord if you do not give me certain things after some time I may begin to reconsider my passion help me tonight I came to Koinonia for my passion to be renewed help me I want to grow help me Lord I'm sorry I've taken your pursuit and replaced it with many things say Lord I didn't even know when certain desires overtook a genuine passion I was so distracted by the burdens upon me that I did not realize that I had missed out on a genuine passion genuine passion not tied to marriage not tied to money not tied to fame not tied to ministry not tied to anointing I have been crucified with Christ I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ 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 in me Christ above me, Christ before me, Christ by my side, my motivation, the beginning, the end. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen. God is re examining the foundations from which our pursuit for Christ is hinged on because the Bible says if the foundation it says if the foundation be destroyed are you listening to me? we are still praying I have not finished the teaching but I just sense in my spirit to sing one more song it's all about you it's all about you if you don't believe it don't sing it yet keep quiet keep quiet when you get the revelation you can join but for as many who mean it it's all about you it's all about you it's all about you jesus hey it's all about you it's all about you it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. For the last 
for Jesus in the presence of your friends is because you are not yet convinced that's why you cannot share Jesus with others you are afraid of the embarrassment you are conscious of your beauty that's an idol you are conscious of it lest it will kill an opportunity to be in a relationship you cannot share Christ with your business partner with your lecturer have replaced him with different things in our hearts so every time satan comes he comes projecting your loss first and foremost so that you cannot resist lord help us tonight hallelujah hallelujah that's why you are here. Please be seated and let's continue. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that before the day of the Lord, listen to me, the spirit of Elijah, Malachi 4, before the spirit, before the day of the Lord, the spirit of Elijah will be sent forth to prepare the way. And so before Jesus came, the spirit of Elijah was sent forth. And he began to prepare the way. How was he preparing the way? Calling the people to realize how bad they had fallen. Not because he could redeem them. Baptism at that time was not a sign of new birth. It was an indication that they would be interested in what Jesus was coming to offer. So as many who were convicted by his teaching prepared their hearts so that when the Messiah showed up, they would not resist him. For John himself did not have any power to save any man. But he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was an echo. And right now that same spirit of Elijah has been released upon the body of Christ. To expose the works of iniquity and to bring the sons of God into righteousness. And this is what is happening across every church and every denomination that truly names the name of Christ. is a manifestation of this prophetic spirit that is able to receive of the things of God. And communicate it fearlessly. This is how your Christianity will last. So that 30 years from now, you will raise your children in the fear of the Lord. They will know no other doctrine and no other gospel. By default, they will, they will be built knowing that they love God and they have a passion for Him and Him alone. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. When the Holy Ghost brings you to this position, the next thing that happens is He begins to subject you through different dealings and trainings. Please listen, this is important. This is the principle, the way God prepares His army. And the way, hallelujah. Now, please look up. One is not a tragedy, but if we don't do anything about it, it will become an old wine. Hallelujah. There was a time in the body of Christ when our pursuit was for Rema. Praise God. Please listen to me. Rema. And the quality of your ministry was proportional to the depth of Rema. Insight into scripture. Hallelujah. How you could compare scripture with scripture. How you could quote whole chapters. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong in that. We gave awards to people for quoting chapters and chapters of scripture. 
But I need you to know that in the progression of the dealings of God, listen, the Holy Ghost begins by exposing you to the knowledge of God. Are you listening to me? He brings you to that point where you begin to know about God through the scripture. You begin to browse through scripture and see the character of God and see his life and his nature and his principles. But can I tell you something? And this is where a lot of the church body need to upgrade their life. And anytime I say this, people get offended. I don't castigate ministers. But I am the voice that must echo the things that I hear in the spirit. Are you listening to me? I don't have a problem with any church. In fact, there is no channel I don't watch. But listen to me, let me tell you something. When you say, I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. That settles it. I need you to know, listen to me. That it's not the fault of those who have brought this revelation. And it's not a lie. But that is not all there is. Are you listening to me? It's not a lie because scripture cannot be broken. However, if that is the only perspective that is seen in the body, then there is no completion. Are you following me now? And so there was a, an error and a dispensation where our fathers contended and pressed in the spirit and they came into that dimension where they began to understand that, wow, from scripture, I'm free from condemnation. Are you listening to me? I'm free but the Bible says knowledge shall increase meaning it was not supposed to stop with that discovery are you listening to me that is a sign of a healthy Christian that there is progression into the depths of the spirit the Bible says we see in part and according to that part we prophesy so when God enlarges that which you see you begin to prophesy but many people have camped around certain revelations and will fight anything that looks above it calling it error are you listening to me there are many people who have been taught in church that there's nothing like demons nothing like satan the only demon you have is in your mind but that's not true well for those who grew up under cnn but for those who my father's mother was a traditionalist are you listening to me so i'm not trying to guess that satan exists it's one thing to believe he exists it's another thing to believe he has power over you that is where it's faulty are you listening to me but for you to just kick away and say forget it there's no demon anywhere ha ah, be careful because many of the people who are speaking will later on find out the reason why they are stunted in their life and will not make advancement. A number of them have discovered it, but their arrogance will not allow them to admit that they have seen a greater light. And so they would rather prefer to camp in what they believe to be the final revelation of the dimension of God that is given to man. When you read a lot of Kenneth Hagin's books, there are many things written in that book that you might not totally agree with right now. Is that correct? That was because during Kenneth Hagin's time, the level and the operation of the spirit and the truths that were opened there was what he received and documented. So you cannot criticize him. But at the same time, in as much as we call him a general, we cannot stop at that level. Are you listening to me? So I cannot build a camp around Kenneth Hagin and say all that he taught, the thing that was moving the church was physical manifestation, gold dust, silver dust. Everybody will bring every kind of thing. Your watch, the, the silver on your watch will scratch on your hand and say, see, gold dust. And it was not wrong. Listen to me. But the Holy Ghost was studying the way we were responding to it. The moment it would become an idol, he sees that experience so that we will continue with the next dealings of the Spirit. But where you encamp around gold dust, and you find your ministry around gold dust and oil and so on and so forth then there will be trouble because you will resist those who are progressing in the spirit 
and you will try to create many teachings to prove that they are in error not knowing that you are the one who is taunted and even when the holy ghost is ministering to you a time will come the light will be too bright you cannot explain and so you will begin to get angry because the people are not stupid the bible says it will happen to us as it happened in nephtha and zebulun he said the people in nephtha and zebulun there was a prophecy he says those who are in darkness they have seen a great light not a light a great light So it will happen a great light one characteristic of a healthy church is the ability to transit with the spirit but when the man of God takes the place of God and makes himself the final authority in the church he is unable to adjust because his ego will not be able to accommodate the explanations he has to give for his transition in the spirit Transition in the spirit is not, is not a thing of embarrassment. Hallelujah. There are ministers who stop their members from reading some books because of insecurity. They want to keep the members around what they believe is the full and universal counsel of God. And I hear a lot of ministers teach with such arrogance and they do not know that there are other dimensions that are being opened up. There are many who did not stop in yesterday's wine. They kept contending and God is opening greater doors and those doors just like in 2005 when the revival came to the campus about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and what we know today to be new creation realities it happened in 2005 and that was the time when we were coming into this knowledge we didn't even know these things we were coming into this knowledge the revelation of Kenyon's teachings the revelation of Pastor Chris's teachings I mean, I was so blessed. I'll never forget how many times we we'll lock ourselves. Boy, we're stepping into things in the anointing. Those times, if someone fell on the floor, you will run and catch the person and take him to Sig Bay because you are not sure what happened. But right now, even in your prayer group, three people, even unbelievers now have acclimatized to the fact that there is a manifestation of the Spirit and people can fall. But we cannot stop there. And so what is there what else is there to look because the mistake that many of us are making in our churches and the rest is we are encamping around an experience and will not move as see a man of God is not the one who is supposed to look at the people he's supposed to set his eyes on the cloud the moment the cloud begins to motion movement he alerts the people and said the cloud is moving begin to follow and move are you listening to me because at that time we we're taught that if there is no instant manifestation in your life something was wrong with your faith and so while the Holy Ghost was trying to deal with us and taking us through processes that will bring us into maturity those teachings were were wrestling his ministry in our lives but as an act of God's grace, we're able to switch and to align and to realize that in Hebrews 11, there were women who raised their dead back. And women, those times we could not explain what happens if a family dies. Hallelujah. We don't know what message to tell them because we have been taught you are supposed to stand and live forever. And any death is a sign of weakness and Satan and so on and so forth. But that was good to a measure, but it is not applicable today. There must need to be a growth. And so we read from scripture by the Holy Ghost. How that some people died. Are you listening to me? Without receiving the promise. And he said other people raised their dead back to life. He joined all the experiences and called it faith. So we began to question the things that we had been believing. Not to scorn the people. But to say look. Where they put full stop is supposed to be a comma. There are many of you there are experiences god is giving you you have not found the confirmation yet i hope we have time wherever we can stop today and every time you go to your pastor they tell you no this kind of thing we we don't like it you see that it is a new operation it's the manifestation of the new wine it must be discerned in an atmosphere where people have ears and they can tell you although this is strange we confirm by the spirit that this is an operation of the lord fire on 
Many of you have stunted your spiritual growth because of different messages you have heard. For instance, I know people who say, just pray for five minutes and pray for ten minutes. You are a king. Speak it once. <laughs> Brother, let me tell you the truth. If that is how you want to raise your Christianity, there will be a bitter casualty that will teach you a lesson that may take decades for you to recover from. Because the Bible gives us the character of a man of prayer. He said Elijah was a man of like passion. He said he prayed earnestly. Are you listening to me? So, there is nothing wrong in receiving the teachings that you have. But I'm only saying, we salute the generals. I respect every man of God. I mention them by name. They have been impacts to our lives. Until today, we still listen to them. Forever, they remain generals. They have entered the hallmark of grace. However, there is a fresh mandate upon our generation. Are you listening to me? And according to the measure of grace that is coming upon us, we cannot use the new discoveries we are having to mock them. For that will be immaturity. But at the same time, we will not refuse to progress because we want to pay our homage and allegiance to their doctrine. Are you growing tonight? Because if I don't balance this, many of you will now stand and watch some of our fathers and hear their revelation like I see a lot of people do and they just laugh. They say, I've left this realm. When you find yourself doing that, you are a child. It's not demon possession. The remedy is just to grow up. Are you listening to me? I have tapes and tapes i follow the men of god attentively because listen although eli's eye was dim it was eli who told samuel that it was the voice of god eli was a type of our fathers although their eyes are getting dim not because they are backsliding but their dispensation and the blueprint of their prophetic agenda is coming to an end so there is a mantle transferring the spirit although they may to some of you not look relevant we approach them with discretion one leg we are approaching the spirit and saying holy ghost we are trusting you and then we are receiving direction you see the balance so you don't begin to use your revelation and say ah this ministry they just teach on this and that and that no we appreciate them and we salute them forever they are called generals compared to them we are only but toddlers rising up in the spirit however he told jeremiah do not be afraid of the people and say i am young for i will put my words in your mouth he said go and speak so there is an emergence of people we will be persecuted because of our age and because we are not conforming to the mold of religion how be it there is a new wine and the one who sent us will stand to defend us this is why you will see a lot of young people doing supernatural things for god but then if we are careful and we are trained enough we will realize that in the midst of all of these things we ought to give god glory Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, change your full stop to a comma. Say it one more time. Change your full stop to a comma. Do not reject the operations of the Spirit. Open up yourself. Please, don't be caught up in that thing. My church, my pastor, this is what we believe. God is leading you to a book in the bookstore. It may be by an author you don't like. There's nobody I don't watch. Let your mind grow while nobody. If I cannot learn anything, at least I can learn diligence in ministry. So you must maintain a posture. Are you listening to me? So the dealings of the spirit when the holy ghost begins to walk and shed off a lot of religion from our lives follow me to romans please let's see how far we can get and then we'll pray blessed be the name of the lord can we pray in tongues for two minutes just seated go ahead and pray in tongues get used to it the bible says these signs will follow them 
that means when the authentic church arises by grace this will be part of the signs like I said there are many of you who probably may be here and have a problem with what we are doing don't reject it just open up your heart and seek understanding we are loving enough to explain Lord let me grow Lord let me grow Lord let me grow in the name of Jesus I refuse to lag behind hallelujah the first thing that happens to you hallelujah the work of a believer is that by acknowledging that Jesus is Savior over your life and his Lordship the Bible makes us to understand that the Spirit of God comes to live in you hallelujah the Bible says he that is joined to Christ is what one spirit so there is a oneness that happens from the realm of your spirit what is the result faith is imparted in you and suddenly you begin to gain meaning over spiritual things the things you would have rejected because the Spirit of God lives in you he begins to direct you now watch this you will read in your Bible as you progress in this journey now you are born again and then you begin to read in your Bible let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich wonderful then you find another one you have been anointed to heal the sick to cast out devils wonderful you keep noting the scripture hallelujah by the time you have 30 or 40 beautiful scriptures now you will, you will rise up based on the confidence of those scriptures God will not fail hallelujah then your first attempt on a man on a wheelchair he doesn't stand and then a question begins to brew in your heart what happened hallelujah and then you saw that you are the head and not the tail then your result came out and you saw a carryover and he said well uh, uh, God is just something is there. you just leave the question mark there and then some of us go to our men of God and say please what meaneth these things I'm not getting it the things I see in scripture and the manifestation in my life is creating a contrast and most of us men of God all we tell God's innocent people because that is the limitation of the perspective that we see you don't have faith it's not enough stir up your faith if his faith is you walk now the people stare how do I stare and they get books and they keep reading they read different kinds of books volumes of books to the point that they can recite the books and then they don't see a noticeable improvement in their life and they come back and then we are unable to give them answers listen to me the journey of a believer the moment you give your heart to the Lord listen you begin to progress from knowing God to entering into an experiential walk with him are you listening to me and the experience of God with a man cannot be taught it is unique it is a unique dealing are you listening to me now through those experiences your convictions about the things you see in the world begin to crystallize and gain substance are you listening to me the first area of argument is your mind the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 5 let's look at it quickly romans 8 from verse 5 for they that are after the flesh do what they do mind the things of the flesh 
But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. He said, for to be carnally minded. That means to be ruled by your senses. To be ruled by your emotions. To be ruled by the things you see, the things you hear. And all of these things. The Bible says to be ruled by them. Any other thing other than Christ is death. In other words, it is an effort in futility. Hallelujah. And so your mind begins to wrestle the things of God. Because when God steps into your life, listen, He's not seeking a space. He's seeking the whole. He's not seeking a part of you. And say, okay, other things. Uh-uh. The moment He stands there, He begins to wrestle and push every other thing. Hallelujah. And that's where the willing submission of a believer begins. Listen to me. You can choose where to stop in your spiritual journey by saying, Lord, I've tried and I've come thus far. This one will not go. God will begin to touch them. Are you ready to listen to me? So you love God so much. And then one day God will say, empty your account. You say, how about God? I bind, I reject that demon. He has taught something. He's bringing your finances into obedience with Christ. Then he touches your, your uncle who sent you money all the time. Say, Lord, my faith is working. Now he doesn't send you money. And what happens? Eh, my faith is still working. After two months, <laughs> you really find out that the one you've been trusting was not God. Hallelujah. And then he keeps touching those things until he comes to a point where he is exalted king. I like a song that says, He's exalted, the king is exalted on high. You know that song? He's exalted, the king is exalted on high. Powerful song. So the Holy Ghost begins to wrestle your flesh. What happens? You are born again. And although you are shouting, but the issue of women, you have not, you have not surrendered that part. So there is half Babylon, half. You are, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And you are preaching. Hallelujah. But then you sit down and start remembering those days when you, in the, you are in the world. And every lady that passes around with any guy standing, you say, you are covering my view, please. There is a contention. This is what the Bible is telling us. Are you following me now? Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. It now begins to tell us, it said, now I say then walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It said, for the flesh lusted after the spirit and the spirit after the flesh and both of them are consistently under contention. And then although you are born again, you find out that you are still involved in masturbation and certain things. You may not tell people, but this has contentions. You are praying about it. I'm showing you the progression. Then you begin to see every kind of thing. When you are praying before God and you are praying in tongues, you begin to see God brings out the state of your heart. Envy, lust, jealousy. You say, Lord, me? Me? I'm a new creation. I'm born again. But then you are seeing your old man. Cain is alive and strong. Wrestling with Abel. And because Cain is the elder brother of Abel. That flesh, it had gained dominance in your mind. Now Abel wants to come and take his place. And so there is a contention. Are you listening to me? The old man does not want to give way. The old man does not want to give way. And then Satan gives you an alternative. He said, look, there is something called the grace of God and God's mercy. Why don't you wrap yourself around that revelation and let everything go? And so you are laughing. You are saying, hallelujah. All things are working well. But you sleep in the night and people come and press you and sleep with you. You get up in the morning and it's not a problem. You will never tell anybody. You're just smiling. But these are questions you are asking. 
and say, what is wrong with my new creation status? And God is saying, no, it's a journey. Your mind is giving room for Satan to find expression in your life. And you are unable to lay down everything. Are you listening to me? You love God, it does not mean you are a devil. Don't let anybody condemn you, but you must not condone your state. You must do something about it. Hallelujah. You never believed you could steal. One day, in the heat of hunger, you just saw 100 naira wanting to take it. The Holy Ghost told you it's your roommate's own. You can't say you didn't hear him. And he said, Lord, the flesh contending with the spirit. And he said, does it really matter? Lord, if I ask her, she will give me. So what's the difference? God is saying, ask them. Because there is a protocol in the spirit and you just whistle and squeeze out and carry the hundred naira. you buy bonds and you eat and god keeps quiet it does not mean he's endorsing you he's only encouraging you because a time will come his light will shine in that area of your life while men slept the enemy planted tears among the wheat and the people who were with the husband man said should we begin to walk he said no in the process of pruning it you will remove some things so let them grow there is a level you get to then god will say all right about this issue of masturbation it's been two years and uh, although you have been healing the sick like can we deal with it now say no oh, i'm a new creation what kind of embarrassment is this oh lord don't bring up this issue and satan begins to give you an excuse we have a church that is so dignified and we cannot open up ourselves before God because we think it's an act of weakness. Can I tell you something, friends? If you must grow and be truth, if, if, if you must grow and be mature and stand in truth, then you must open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit examine your mind and prune out everything that does not conform to Christ. Hallelujah. While that is happening, you will seem to be standing in one place in your journey. Other people have started ministry since they are going. They are already on air. You are there cleaning out a lot of things. Are you listening to me? Because God is saying the kind of army I need to present. And your colleague who you started laboring in the spirit together has seven branches now. And the guy looks at you and says, Are you there's an urgency in the spirit? Let's run. The harvest is wide. And he said, are you prepared? Guys, are you joking? Meanwhile, his choir ladies cannot rest again. Because the realm of the spirit does not know whether you are apostle or prophet. And so in the middle of the teachings, what happens? Cain, you look at a beautiful lady, patience. How? And then you are preaching. And then Cain says, this side again. And you look and you say, I have a prophetic word for you. Now, it's not your fault. You love the Lord. But you did not stay sufficient for the Holy Ghost to begin to take over your mind. So, although you are prophesying, suddenly, you are a prophet and you notice that Sam is the general manager of a bank. And by prophetic insight, you are giving access to his account number. Say, Sam, stand up. While you say stand up, the message that is coming from God is that you walk steadfastly, but you add command to where God stops and Cain rides out with the prophecy. He said, more so, God is telling you to drop an amount. And because of the accuracy of your delivery, you are consoled and you think it is God. Are you listening to me? And so based on it, you open a ministry, but then you find out that there are many things although before people you are great in the spirit you weigh very small because you have refused to stay in the spirit and then your members begin to contend for truth and they come to a point where they begin to discern that something is wrong although these guys anointed and have the gift of the spirit we do not see the character that represents the posture of a matured man in the spirit then you begin to come up with all kinds of rules be quiet and don't challenge authority. Whatever we give you, God will not talk to you people except he comes to us. Have you had teachings like that? 
That's lack of fire in progress, brothers. Because the Bible is very explicitly clear. Mm, this is what you get in Koinonia. We want us to be strong. Listen, I trust the Lord that the least person among us will be as strong as David. We won't lie to you. That's why we hold miracle services. Is that correct? And you come, we don't bug you with all these things. We just pray. But when it comes to building, watch me. There was a day, now I'm careful to say this, some years ago, the Lord told me that I should not open my Bible for one week. And I did not understand. Could that be the spirit of the Lord or not? But I eventually found out that it was God. And God gave me the reason. He said, son, every meeting that happens, you are going. Like many of you are here with your notebooks. It takes something in your head to be the head. You know how Bishop Oedeko writes powerful statements. Take something in your head to be the head. Now he's writing. You are jotting. He's speaking from a depth of revelation. You just want Rema. And you say, boy, if I preach on this in my Thursday fellowship, they will know that I'm not an ordinary person. Now you are getting these things. He's speaking from the bowels of the spirit. But it came to you just as knowledge. Rema. Are you listening to me? And now you are writing it. And God told me, he said, son, you have gotten many things that can move you forward, but you are not moving forward. You are junking your head with knowledge. Close your Bible and let's begin to bring you into the experience of these revelations that you had. So I didn't say, you see, it's my unique dealing. That's why I can't write a book about it. Are you listening to me? And God began to open me up. I remember that's when God began to teach me on character. Look, let me tell you, I was walking in the anointing of the spirit in a way you cannot imagine. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit asked me, this is the experiential dealing now. I'm teaching you how the Holy Ghost trains you. He begins to subject you through personalized experience that only you can tell. The only thing is when you share the experience with another person, you will find out that although the, the patterns of dealings are different according to what he wants you to become, but you see that there is a similarity of objectives, what he's trying to achieve. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost made me to draw a diagram of the fruit of the Spirit versus their manifestation in my life. Personalized dealings. He is training me. He is now giving life to the head knowledge I've had of Scripture. I knew it so well. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I knew this in, right from Sunday school. But now there was, it was now time for the reality. And let me tell you something. For the first time in my life, my ego was torn to my knees. I was shocked to find out that less than 10% of the fruit of the Spirit was alive and walking. Although I was anointed, although we were praying for people, although we had gone for crusades, I said, ah, Lord, you have to help me. Thank God it's only me and you that is seeing this thing. Let's flog it out right now. Are you listening to me? Do not be embarrassed when God calls you to your knees as a general, it's not a symbol of shame. He's pruning you to lift you. So don't be embarrassed to find out that there is an issue you need to flog out in your life. Don't let religion lie to you and say it's all over. Walk out that soteria, that salvation with fear, reverence for God and with trembling because it has consequences if you leave it. Hallelujah. And when I began to do that, I saw improvement in my life. And people were happy. When I went for ministration, they said, we have a very humble servant of God. And I could imagine the Holy Spirit saying, now you, are you not enjoying the blessings? I thought that was over. Later on again, he said, there's part two of that character dealing. And he gave me another dealing. And I found out I failed flawlessly. Although you people can see me and say, wow, great man of God. It's only me and God that knows the dealings and the levels. Are you listening to me? Many preachers will not tell you this because they stand as omniscient, omnipotent, and omni whatever. And let me tell you, if they don't take steps, they will be embarrassed. Because the realm of the spirit has no apology for what your members call you. 
you begin to contend for the experience. Listen, and in that contention, you begin to know the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? You begin to know the Holy Ghost. There are certain promptings of the Spirit that come upon me to know the kinds of anointings that are in a place. I cannot teach you. I can only explain. It's my personalized dealing. In the place of prayer, there is a way and a manner that the Holy Ghost moves upon me that I know that I've hidden something in the Spirit. And I know that this prayer has been answered. Are you listening to me? There is a way I can sense danger. If somebody wants to call me, maybe to pray for the sick. Sometimes, few minutes before that time, I suddenly sense the anointing of the spirit. And I sense the presence of healing angels. How did I learn that? The experiential dealings of the spirit. This is how a believer grows. One day you are praying, suddenly your tongues begin to change. That's your first time of encountering it. And then you are saying, what is happening? Suddenly I found out that I cannot even talk again. I'm voicing but I'm not speaking. These are questions. The Holy Ghost is luring you deeper with these experiences. People may reject it but you know. Suddenly you, you are praying and you begin to sense the presence of people. You know that you are not alone in that room. And now your spirit is being trained. It's a customized dealing. This is not the type. There are many of you while I'm speaking right now. The first time I was speaking, you were caught up in the spirit. You didn't even know that it was a spiritual experience. Suddenly you found out that we're sharing the grace. And you just smiled. You went back home quietly. And then you ended that dealing. Instead of you to begin to contend with the spirit. Every time you prayed, you would lie down and see something that will happen exactly the next day. You trivialized it, but after seeing it two or three times, the Holy Ghost is saying, this is part of the tools you will need as my army. And so begin to take note of it. I sleep with notebooks. I sleep with my Bible, my notebooks, and my pen. Because at every time, you see, so you begin to walk with the Spirit. And you come to a point where you can look at someone and be able to help the person out of the abundance of your experience. Are you listening to me? The atmosphere of your spirit is alive. Now your mind begins to submit gradually but surely to the lordship of the spirit. You begin to imbibe his word. His word now, the, the Holy Spirit begins to orchestrate occasions that will make the word be living and active in your life. So it's no longer just a logos here. It has become true. Are you listening to me? And then one time you will have cause. And your father or your mother will not send you money. And the Holy Ghost will say, I want to show you a dimension of me that is accessible. I want to train you and build you. And then he says, now depend on me. Get up and go to your friend's room. As you are stepping into your friend's room, you see him with an envelope of 5,000. He says, the Lord was leading me. And you say, so that dealing I thought was my mind was the Holy Ghost. You are growing. There is a progression. Are you listening to me? There is a progression. Suddenly you sit down and you sense, guys, something is wrong. And you just tell your colleague, let's pray. Let's pray. Five minutes later, they call. And they say, someone had a ghastly motor accident and he would have died. And God said, note that impression. I will make reference to it again. Your customized dealings with the spirit. This is how a Christian becomes a mature person. Because over time, you begin to gather these things and the Holy Ghost begins to shed light and he begins to teach you. So, prayer becomes exciting not because you want to go and do religion. You anticipate a new experience. And so you are praying and wondering what next will the Holy Ghost do. Suddenly you are praying on your own. The next thing you wake up and find out that you were on the floor. When you fell, you did not know. You thought you were too praying, but suddenly you found out that you had been in a vision for a long time. And you say, Lord, what, what is going on in my life? The dealings. Are you learning something, please? Then you begin to pray. Then you begin to build. There are times that you are sleeping and God gives you a dream and you get up and there is no direct application of that dream in your life. The dream was an explosion of your mind and your spirit to acclimatize with the dealings of God so that scripture will now begin to make sense based on the things you have visualized in your dreams. 
So you find yourself walking on water. And in that dream, a lot of people say, Mami, water, calm down. Don't just call everything Satan. You find yourself walking with Jesus on water in a dream. He's giving you the feeling so that when you come back and open that scripture, light that never entered you will now enter you. There are times in the dream you see yourself laying hands on the sick and you have the feeling of victory, the manifestation of faith. And every time God will preserve that memory in your mind so that the next time you see somebody in a wheelchair, you have that same feeling and it will, end, it will help the anointing to flow in your life. And suddenly for the first time, it will be like a dream. Are you following me tonight? The dealings of the spirit. Bringing the knowledge of God into the experience of God for you. Then you begin to speak. You are understanding the operations of the spirit. Now when you stand to preach, listen, you will not just talk as if you are talking. Your convictions are getting stronger. Listen, when you experience God, that's the only condition that you can die for him. It's not by confession. Are you listening to me? Stand up, sweetheart, my dear. Look at me. If I call you a man, what will you do about it? There are too many experiences in your life that have crystallized in your spirit, soul, and body that you are a lady. Is that correct? For instance, men don't wear with one except there's something wrong with them. Except there is a drastic shortage of the dealings of the spirit in their lives. Please sit down. Now this is a lady. If you give birth to a baby, listen. Do you know if you separate a baby from any other person and you keep telling that baby you are a boy, you are a boy. Although she's a lady, she will grow up knowing and thinking and acting like a man. Because the first experience she receives is on account of what you are speaking to her. Are you listening to me? That's why God designed the trainings of ladies and men to be such that no man can deceive another. When the guy becomes a teenager, suddenly his voice is getting husky. Final betrayal. Nothing can deceive him that he's a lady. And then he sees mustache on his face. Uh, all these things begin to tell him, look, Mr. Man, you are not a lady. And then, what are they doing? There are memories in his mind. And then he comes to a point where he's convinced and he can die believing that he's a man. So that when Americans are saying right now, uh, there are factors we need to look at to ascertain whether a man is a man or a woman. You say you are on your own. I know and I am persuaded that I'm a man. This is how it must be. But when you do not walk with the spirit, and this is the ministry of the fivefold, to bring us to a point where we create the roadmap. Listen, what we do is we plant and we water, but it's your dealings with God that brings increase in your life. Are you listening to me? Our job is to open up a portal and lead you and say go. And then you begin to experience certain dimensions of God. You have been reading every time. The Bible talks about tithing. And then you have been saying, wow. If they ask you in Sunday school, you answer discipleship, you answer. CRS, you answer and you do very well. And then one day God begins to tell you, all right, you've been reading this thing. When will you put it to work? Experience. Knowledge translating into experience. Now you come out here and stand and you drop the tithe. And listen to me. God will oftentimes cause the result to happen instantly so that you can see the difference you are just dropping it and the next time it may not happen like that all the time this is what happens to new converts every prayer is answered before they pray to be answered and they are like man this Christianity that means most Christians are lazy then one day you pray and it's not answered that fast and God will say alright uh, I was just helping you to be encouraged so that should in case you don't get an answered prayer you know you once had one and you can follow me then he begins to teach you. you want to, have you seen many believers who say, I just got saved. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I started praying for the sick immediately. And truly they were healed. Ask them after five years whether they continued. It was a motivation. 
God is smart, he knows how to encourage you. It was a bonus to encourage you that, look, you are seeing believers praying and fasting. You didn't pray, you didn't fast. Rema just came. And you say, if this is how it is, then I can be a preacher. And then one day you are starved of revelation. The Bible becomes a blank page from Genesis to Revelation. And then he begins to teach you the principle of receiving from the Spirit. Then you begin to honor the people you have once criticized. And say, oh, I respect your fasting. You, know, you are not wasting your time. A body that becomes matured. Not just in knowledge, but in experience. That's why I like our mothers. They have gone through childbirth. They have escaped accidents. So whenever they are talking about the faithfulness of God, no matter whether they are not concerned whether I can place well or not, you just raise a song. Even if it's, Oh, come, oh, ye faithful. They just close their eyes because it's a reflection of their experience. They have come to know God. When they were giving birth to the third child, they almost died. And they called on his name and it brought salvation. So whenever they read and they say, the Lord is my strength and my light, they have an experience that can relate to that knowledge. And for them, it's not waste. Hmm. Are you listening to me? A woman who has five children and four died in an accident. And then, see, this is one of the reasons why when you hear a man who has experienced God, when he speaks, you will cry because he's speaking from the depth of his experience. I remember listening to Reverend Dr. Umau cry. Lost his children after a crusade. After a crusade, his children drowned and died. He had to start a new family again. So when he reads the book of Job and Job said, though he slay me, he will say yes, because there is an experience. He has gotten that dimension of God and nobody will take it away. Have you gotten the experience for the revelations you are shouting about? For that may be the missing link. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you come to a point where you experience certain things. Don't waste your experiences. Let the Holy Ghost use them as a training ground to make you mature. That's why the Bible says, count it all joy when you face diverse temptations. Knowing that the trying of your faith will produce patience. And let patience have its full course. There is an end. It will make you become something. When you come to Koinonia, there are different kinds of worshippers. Those who have experienced what the worship people are singing. Are you following me now? That's why when who raised worship? Sam, come. If Sam, if Sam comes to stand here and sing and say, um, Lord, I give you my heart. If there is no experience to validate that revelation, you will know because there is an absence of truth. Have your way in me. Lord, even if he's kneeling down, you just know that there is a separation between this man and the spirit of this song. And experience has not brought it into light. Hallelujah. But if you waited 10 years before getting admission, and he said, Lord, I love you. And he says, Lord, I give you my heart. You cannot explain it may not even be his voice his experience is doing something to your spirit deep is calling on to deep have your way in me that's why he can compose other versions and not care about what you are thinking because those versions relate to his experience when he, that's why you see when whenever we say sing in the spirit or express yourself to the lord some people just stand it's not your fault You've never had to look for school fees by yourself. You've never had to trust God for his faithfulness. You've never had to. You are too innocent. There is no experience. So the Bible is just like a book and you just know the memory verses. But somebody who's, whose name came out in that list has an experience about the faithfulness of God. Somebody whose mother was almost dying of childbirth and they had to come together praying day and night knows that there are demons in the village and that prayer can conquer Satan. So while you are talking English on stage, that revelation, the memory 
of the times he had to spend to travel that memory is too deep for your deceits to just take him out that becomes a platform for a healthy prayer life so right now your prayer life is not founded upon intimidation from your colleagues there is an experience that has provoked you to the place of prayer and you know you must remain there as a matter of life and death hallelujah and then the bible have you ever had certain experiences and then some songs you used to listen to that don't make sense later make sense and then you just feel like listening to Don when you have criticized his keyboard suddenly makes sense to you he never sleeps and that and you begin to cry it's an experience that is making you grow because out of that experience the word of god will now come alive are you getting blessed please so it's not enough to write god is telling you to write all those things in your notebook because the day the experiences of your life will bring you into the knowledge of that aspect of God. You will appreciate what you have written. That's why when you hear some people talking, you see, you see pastors standing up. They are touched by the statement. And the members are saying, what nonsense is this? The day you start running your own church, after three years, you will stand up for every man that says what they said that you are just watching. Because for four weeks after you begin to pastor the four weeks is full of crisis that you have to settle and you say lord did you call me so next time you are seeing somebody say god is faithful and the man of god is relating it to his pain his pain has become a message that helps him to understand what the holy spirit can do in the in a man's life this is how believers become matured and if this is not taught in the body of christ we are going to have a crippled people are you listening to me so you get up based on these experiences my wallet has been missing for a long time if it was before i called it for called it for it didn't come i said lord look i have i have better things to pray about i have a, a family of believers we need to train but remember one time i gave you a story that an angel came and brought it i prayed i said where is that angel Hallelujah. The rigor of going through ATM activities right now and all the things there. But when your heart is with God, anything that leaves you cannot, it only creates more space for him to fill. So you see a believer walk and you are wondering how do people live like this? They just sacked your father and he comes back dancing. And you are like daddy are you joking my school fees he says don't worry i don't know what will happen but i remember in 1975 a similar thing happened and there was a song that i sang many of you don't have experiences that you can fetch this is why testimony is important when you give testimony you give people a tool that they can use to fight satan tomorrow and then you become a matured christian Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin went through all kinds of sicknesses that wanted to kill him. So when he stands ministering to people, God brings that memory. And out of that memory comes compassion. And from that compassion, the anointing will flow. You've not had any experience. That's why you say, this miracle service said, why are people always falling? The day you have their kind of disease, you will value our ministry. Hallelujah. Why must you prophesy? You are wasting our time, Jerry. The day your father looks at you and says, now you have become an adult, fend for yourself. You will know whether you have believed God or not. And then you, you will begin to sing songs, including Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Now it will not be special number. An experience has compelled you to appreciate that revelation of the word. To the point that whenever you read John 3.16, you can start crying on stage people are saying john 3 16 it's not about the verse it has made you to know the holy spirit in a certain way that you wouldn't know him this is how the ancient were dealt by god certain experiences open certain dimensions of god and so they knew that god was certain things and they died believing it what do you believe about god 
how have your experiences helped you to come into the knowledge the experiential knowledge of God some of the dealings of God in our lives is what has given us audacity to be able to stand and declare certain things and you watch and say how old are these people that they speak with such audacity it's not about the age it's the depth of the experiences am I ministering to someone tonight we are going to pray when that happens listen to me you come to a point where you do not trust any other thing again aside from God at that point he becomes king of kings and lord of lords then you will now appreciate my song king of my life you are my all don't sing it and i live for you alone i wrote that song on valentine's day and i lay my life for you listen my heart is yours is it making sense to you now my mind is yours my will is yours you're the king of my life so when the worship team raises you say ah this song is not sweet you you enter an experience that will make that bitter water become sweet and then every day you hear it you say ah you may not know the song you just say my heart and you keep saying my heart and you are crying and it's ministering to you and you are shedding tears and you are you are shedding tears when the victory comes you take note of that song have you since your, your parents noted certain songs it doesn't make sense to you why they like it they sang it the day you will be delivered you almost died your father was almost dying of hypertension around the labor room and that song ministered to him and every time you sing it he remembers you and the destiny of God in your life many of you look at my name and say my name is not Abba why would they name me Joy and then they will tell you the experience that led to that name that they waited 10 years with no child and then you came and they rejoiced and then they called you Joy say it doesn't matter then three years you didn't get admission the day you get you say my name is Joy the revelation has brought you to a position where you begin to appreciate certain things. Believers, we need to grow. This is where God is taking us. When that happens, the consummation of all things is that your body begins to experience that soteria. And then you can allow your body to be a channel through which the life and the power of God can flow to others. Your vocal cords become instruments through which you will communicate his life and power to others. At that point you become useful. But can I tell you something? This is the journey. Stop looking for power and manifestation. What you should be searching for right now is God. Say Lord give me an experience. An experience beyond Christianity an experience an experience Lord I desire an experience with you I've had knowledge I've had so many things so when you hear Michael Smith say it's all about you you'll be wondering and say ah, all about him but Lord I've given you all and the Bible says I've been bought with a price I pray that the Lord will lead you into the pathway that will cause his word to come alive in you at that point nobody will tell you to do evangelism again it will not be guesswork listen when God opens up the operations of the spirit in your life he brings you to a point where your mind and your intellect betrays you again and again and there is only one option left God and your love for him like a trinkuman you say Lord I'm available and you mean it from the depths of your heart and when he begins to use you you will there's there will never be room for pride because the memories of the dealings will remain in your heart hallelujah 
We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. The experiential dealings of the Spirit. That God will give you experiences. Listen. I like that song. Keep playing because we are going to sing it. But before we sing it, I know we are out of time. But just listen to me. You are going to pray. And in that prayer, you are going to cry unto God. And say, Lord, there are many things I know. But they have not become life in my life. Can you give me an experiential revelation of God? Can you use the things around me to bring me to a point where I begin to appreciate you? Strengthen my conviction about the things I believe. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Strengthen my conviction, O oh God. Let my faith not fail me. Strengthen my convictions. That when I say God is faithful, I mean it. That when I say God is holy, I mean it. That when I say I'm righteous, I mean it. Come on, pray. In the place of prayer. As I study the word, I'm tired of reading letters. Let the word become flesh. Strengthen my Christian experience. Make my life a qualitative one. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, I subject my mind to the power of your spirit. I subject my mind to the power of your spirit. Breathe upon me, Holy Ghost. Breathe upon my mind. Affect my life. Breathe upon me. My thinking faculty invade my mindset. Change me. Help me not to trust in any other thing. Help me not to trust in any other thing. The songwriter says, My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. He said, On Christ. The solid rock. Strengthen my Christian experience. That when I say I love you, let it come from the depth of my heart. Strengthen my Christian experience. That when you send me, I will be faithful. Pray. Say, Lord, I want to grow beyond religion. Holy Ghost begin to take me through your experiential dealing that is unique to me your experiential dealing that is unique to me let it make me strong let it make me know you pray brothers and sisters the knowledge of God through your experiences become your message to the world the knowledge of God through your experiences will become your sermon. You will shout it at the mountain top. You will shout it. Nobody will stop you because it's not just a sermon. It's your experience. It's your story of how God took you through the dealings on the anointing, the dealings on character, the dealings on on marriage, the dealings on habits. He said, He that bears fruit, my Father will prove. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, I want to be a strong Christian. Give me reason to pursue you in truth. Give me reason to pursue you. Strengthen my convictions before you send me, O oh God. For what will I tell the nations in the face of challenges? Strengthen my conviction. Let me be thoroughly taught in the school of the Spirit. Pray. Mata Parakata. Let my experience
experiences make you become a friend indeed that stick it closer Hallelujah. So worship team, seek for an experience of your songs. Seek for an experience. Minister, seek for an experience. What message did God give you? Is there an experience that puts fire in it in your spirit? That's why Paul said, no man trouble me. There is a mark in my body that makes me know that I am of Christ. He didn't just call me. There is a mark while he was dealing with me, while he was building me. It left an imprint in my spirit that forever I know I'm called. and then you will preach you will never lack a message every time you sit down with people there is always something to say they may call you a talkative but there are too many experiences you have come to know the Holy Ghost as a guide as an instructor as a teacher as a shepherd indeed for you the Lord is your shepherd you have come to know him as provider he has become El Shaddai. The name of the Lord has become a strong tower where you run to it and you are safe. Come on, just one minute, pray. But take a parata posa prestica. Where there is nothing, there is no one. So your Christianity is not by force. You are not doing God a favor. Say, Lord, enough of Rema. I need experiences that will crystallize my feelings. I want to be convicted. I want to have power. Power. Power with God. I want my words to be full of light and audacity. Bring me to the place of feeling. Give me a message, oh God, out of my experiences with the Holy Ghost. Teach me how to prophesy. Teach me how to preach. Take me through your Bible school. Take me through your Bible college. Train me, oh God. Train me, oh God. Train me, oh God. Teach me character. Teach me discipline. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to make decisions. Make me a leader. Holy Ghost, I've neglected you. But I open up my heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I need you more than ever before. Now I see that you are the secret of life. You are not just a Pentecostal phenomenon. And then you can say, I will pray in tongues. No one will kill my prayer life. I will pray in the spirit. I will sing in the spirit. I need an experience. Create a prayer altar for yourself. Create a place of Bible study for yourself. For yourself, not your group not your department not your church no god for yourself let your experiences give you a message about god all i need is you lord is you lord all i need is you from my heart all I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. You must not be a musician to sing. You just need to have an experience. All I need is you, Lord. Where is the God that brought you out of fire? Where is the God that gave you admission? Have you forgotten His faithfulness? Seeks intimacy and koinonia is a platform that affords you the opportunity to know God for yourself. Give him a name, let your experiences lead you to a point where you go.
call God a name that you do not know one else knows. Give him a secret name that is a product of your dealings with him. Rafa was the dealings of God with a man. Jaira was the dealings of God with a man. El Shaddai was the dealings of God with a man. Sikenu was the dealings of God with a man. What name will you get from your experience with God? What name will you teach the nations that God has become to you? All through this week, listen to me. Many of you are thinking ministry, fellowship, church. Carry your Bible, your jota. Let's restore the days in Zaria. When in the night someone will carry a recharge card, I mean a rechargeable lantern, with tapes, and find a corner, and stay awake and say, Lord, there is something you must show me. I'm not, I'm not looking for it to become a pastor. I need it for life. Let there be a restoration of true hunger. Many of you have left your prayer lives because you started getting some things you were asking God to give you. Remember your hunger for God. Remember your passion. Remember what drove you to the place of the anointing. Remember your cry and your vows and your ordinances to your king. Do not forget. It's too early to forget how that you said, Oh Lord, no matter what you make me, you have my heart remember your vow remember your cries and your vigils unto God and you say Lord if you will make me the head get back to the place of prayer prayer for the purpose of knowing God not just to meet a need get back to the place of Bible study where you can take one week and you are digging through scriptures and say, Lord, I must flog out some things in my life. You are struggling with habits. You write them on a piece of paper. And have one week fasting and prayer. And say, Lord, this thing must leave. Where you say, Lord, you have told men that they are anointed. But I don't see any anointing in my life occasions have presented themselves for me to dispense the anointing but I've been I've not been able to do it I pray for people they are not healed with the Holy Ghost I need to have an experiential revelation of getting filled with the Holy Ghost and it causes you to have a retreat the word retreat has become a foreign word among believers right now only the word prosperity marriage money titles ministry we must restore true passion and godliness I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. Oh, I will search. Lord, ministry will not take place. I will search. I will search. I will search. And I will not take your place in my life. I will search. I will search diligently. Like the ancient, my God, I will search. I will ask you questions. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.